Good evening. Welcome back to Mike Up. Today is Wednesday, June 6th. Uh, welcome back from a long, extended weekend. I know y'all. I missed y'all. Hopefully y'all missed us. No, no show on Friday. No show on Monday. Uh, Fourth of July was on Monday. Celebrated the independence of our country. Um, great, great weekend. We are brought to you by Sterling Automotive. We have a great show to kick off the week on this hump day, which is Wednesday. And I'm just happy to be back. Had a long, it's been a full listen, week. Had it's been a little a full foggy. Week. Yeah. Had a little foggy brain. Oof. It has been a full week. It's been a full week. Wow. I didn't realize that. Had a little foggy brain. It took me a couple days to kind of get my legs back underneath me from this weekend. I went to the beach. Had a long. Swam with the sharks. We swam with the sharks a little bit, not unintentionally, but we swam with them. Uh, went to the beach on Thursday. Played a lot of golf. Still got some improving to do. <laughs> but uh, making some progress, baby steps. It's never gonna, it's not gonna come all at once. I uh, came back on Monday, on the Fourth of July, um, and you know enjoyed a little bit of a low key Fourth of July night at the house, and then started my week again on Tuesday. Beauty of short, of long weekends. You have a short week, and you get back down to the weekend. So we're already halfway through the week. Looking forward to it. How was y'all's weekend? How was your weekend? Floyd? Excellent, excellent. What'd you do? Did a lot of uh, did the full white people activities. We grilled hot dogs. We got on a boat. We did that kind of stuff. Floated what in the, the water. Boat? What, boat? what boat? Where? Like where? Oh, uh, Cane River, brother. I don't even know. Where <laughs> 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 you go to Alexandria, then you keep on going right on to Natchitoches. Oof, that's a drive. Yeah, well, it was, but it was worth it. Was it was a fun. good time. Absolutely. Was a good time. We played. You didn't uh, get much sun. It was kind of rainy. We, yeah, it was a little overcast. We played. Oh, were you a shirt little, guy? Little, a little guy? No, I popped the, popped the top. Okay, there we I go. Popped the top. There we go. 45. There we go. I got one compliment. There you go. And then I got another compliment. And then I got another compliment. Oh, and then they're like, you can put your shirt back on. Yeah, you feel good. Yeah, okay. Is this all from the same person or no? It was yeah. from Lloyd himself. <laughs> <laughs> my mom was there. Yeah. <laughs> Look how good my, my son looks. Him. <laughs> Doing the mom compliments. Yes. Oh, God. Jay, how was your weekend? It's good. It was long. I took a long, nice trip to Dallas. Literally long. Strolled right back in here. <laughs> Literally huh? long. Just drove right back to the Strolled show. Drove right back into the show, and here we are. It was nice. a good trip. How was Dallas? What did you do? I love Dallas. Love great, man. We, had a, we went to a crawfish boil on Saturday. Crawfish boil in Dallas? Saw fam a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Danny McCray. Oh, uh, well, so, I'll do it. Yeah, you know, we there had you go. did it that way. There you go. Um, yeah, saw some family. It's chill, man. Nice, it's nice. Chill. What you got? What uh, you do? It was a chill weekend of Lloyd ignoring my texts. Wow, oh, yeah. Oh. Lloyd doesn't want to get Lloyd, you, yeah. <laughs> Lloyd see, you No, him? see, but like last week after the show, he was like, you know, we're off work this weekend, no shows. Let me know when you go out and I'll come because we had talked about it before. Well, of course. So that he forgot him. to tell you that he was on a boat. Yeah. But, well, I didn't get the boat invite until later, and I was like, oh, that might be fun, because you got to, you know, kind of make some plans then. That is my fault. I am excited to go out. I got to, fa we FaceTimed. New angle of the camera. I know. I'm not yeah, sure if I like it. It's throwing me off. Yeah, I don't me really. Too. It is throwing yeah. me off a little Should bit. Should we close the, the doors? Maybe okay, make it's it. It's still hot in here. Uh, that's true. Maybe, Maybe turn on the lights behind Maybe you? I can. Is that better? I don't know. Is that better? A little bit. That's fine. It's yeah. all right. It looks fine. That's fine. It's the side of it. It's just profile. throwing me off. It's okay. It's a new program. We got We're a lot not of used stuff. to seeing that side. That's we right. got a lot of stuff going on in the studios. We got some construction going on in the other studio for the mic'd up show. The studio that we're in right now has some construction going on. The lighting's better, so if we look better in the light, that is why. We're doing a lot of cool things. Kind of cleaned up the wiring, which that's amazing. This is great. That this looks is awesome. Fun. See, that, um, that, 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 that didn't bother me. It bothered everybody uh, bothered else. Me. It, it, it didn't bother me. It just looks cleaner. I mean, whenever I have to step over stuff without tripping, like that's just that's a lot. But here we are now. We're here now, and we got a lot of really cool things cooking. Um, great show today. They got a lot of things that popped off over the last three or four, actually over the last week. One, Jared's favorite quarterback in the NFL, Baker Mayfield, is now. In the Saints division, so Jared has the pleasure of watching his favorite guy two times a year. Possibly still the holding the clipbook. Yep. Clipbook. <laughs> 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 you don't get the whole clipboard. <laughs> <laughs> he just gets the book. He's just the pamphlet. He just gets the pamphlet. We need to know that you're the not the one calling. <laughs> the <place. laughs> like uh, Varsity Blues is reading the book inside the book. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's him. Uh, he gets traded to the Panthers, which is going to be interesting. Obviously, he has to battle out that starting job. I know he's happy to get out of uh, Cleveland. It's going to be funny when. Deshaun's not starting, and I'm not sure he was going to start anyway. I think that, it's gonna be that even, was already – It'll be even funnier when him and Robbie Anderson shake hands. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Well, they asked, they asked him today. They said he was just trying to be a good teammate to Darnold, is what he said. At okay. The time. He said he no problem. We know yeah, what he really enough. meant, but that's good. Yeah, like fair it. enough. But he hasn't tried to catch a ball from Baker yet, so uh, yeah, that yeah, might yeah. be <laughs> Right. right. Uh, Pac-12 is dead. To you. They're dead. Cook. USC, UCLA, both going to the Big Ten. A lot of travel for them. Uh, apparently, I haven't read all of the article. I haven't done all my research. Uh, shame on me, I know. But UCLA apparently was in a very bad spot financially with their athletic programs. There was rumors to saying that they were going to lose a lot, if not all, of their athletic programs. So moving into the Big Ten stabilizes them financially, actually increases, like makes them very profitable the first time in a long time. Um, it's going to help out the Big Ten. I think that's huge for the Big Ten. Obviously, the emergence of super conferences are inevitable and it's starting to happen. Obviously, USC, Oklahoma, I mean, um, Texas, Oklahoma to the SEC and USC and UCLA to the Big Ten. Obvi those two teams, really those four teams are kind of synonymous with each other, right? One's not going to leave without the other. UCLA and UC USC are always going to go where each other go just because they're right down the street from each other and they're big rivals. Same goes for Texas and Oklahoma. I'm okay with it. I think it's more fun. Um, I think we're going to be able to see them more. I think the time, like the, the time of the games are going to help, obviously, unless they're playing, you know, the home games are going to be the same, but when they're playing in the big 10, it's not going to be the nine o'clock games where you're coming home from football game and you're drunk and, Oh. You're trying to stay up and you're trying to watch but it to make sure be, your they bets They are going to be moving way more time zones than, than they normal. They are. They're so going to be traveling a lot. That is pretty different. They are going to be traveling a lot. West Coast teams. It's going to be um, it's going to be very interesting to see, but I think it's good for them, yeah. obviously, financially. Big, huge, enormous recruiting weekend. We said not panic. Lloyd's still not on board. Tell Lloyd to show you his face. He doesn't Lloyd's, not, the same. Lloyd's still not on board. Y'all want to see my face? Lloyd's still not on board. But it's okay. <laughs> hey, it's a big weekend. We've gotten some guys. We're bringing some guys in. I think some guys that are rated the way they are, I think they're going to be. their ratings are going to go up. I think having LSU, signing with LSU, I think that gives – you've seen it you've seen a million times in recruiting. A guy who may be under the radar or you know hasn't really been seen that much, three-star, he gets offered by somebody – pretty high profile, and all of a sudden his stock shoots to the roof, and now you look at the end of it, man, this guy is a high four-star. Like, where did that come from? What happened last year? Well, it's because he gets more attention. People are seeing it. He's being evaluated by high evaluators, people who understand that, and his, his ranking goes up. So I think that's a uh, – it's a huge plus for us. I think that it's a, it, was a, it was a great weekend. I think we, had, we obviously had a very heated – passionate discussion last Wednesday and this I'm glad this kind of starts to kind of unfold and, and shape up a little bit Zion is here to stay thankfully there's a lot I said there's a lot going on Zion five-year contract we're not going to get to all of it we're just hitting the headlines we're going to try to get to all of it but the big thing about the show today is if you have not read there's an article in the athletic by Eno Saris I hope I got his name right we're going to ask him when he gets on the show this is his name you know, Saris, he wrote this article. Him and a couple other people have contributed to this article. And basically what it, the article is about is about Wes Johnson, LSU's new pitching coach, leaving the major, a major league job that he was getting paid higher, above average salary than most pitching coaches in the big leagues, leaving that to come to a college gig. Obviously, the college gig is paying him more. He has more potential to make money here. Uh, but... There's a lot of quotes from executives, GMs, assistant GMs, scouting directors, all of these people that are in Major League Baseball, and it, it gives you a pretty good insight onto how people think and value the college job versus the pro job, and you know you get a difference of opinions, but I think it, I think the consensus is, and which is crazy to think about this, because you know you look at the NFL teams and you look at you know, NBA teams, and you think, like, all these professional teams have all of the resources, right? right? You would think the same thing for Major League Baseball. That's not the case, right? There's a lot of teams that don't spend money on facilities. There's a lot of teams that don't spend money on their coaches because they don't feel like they're – they feel like a coach in professional baseball is replaceable, right? They don't put the value on that. I'll say this, too, if you really think about it, too, especially when you talk about, like, football – the pitching coach slash hitting coach job is pretty much equivalent to like a coordinator job in football, right? Right. 
Well, there's not many times where those guys see like upward mobility to a manager job, to more money job, to a bigger, right. to a bigger role. Right. So it's kind of in a way, kind of a cap position right. anyway. No doubt. And so that, and they kind of go into that. Yeah. They go into that and they look the average, the, the, the average time a pitching coach is employed in the big leagues for a certain team is two years. That's like the turnaround time. That's crazy. Hitting coaches a year and a half. That's crazy. So they just like in, 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 which yeah. I think that, and I can't wait to talk to you know about this because for me, being a baseball player, like you would think that you would want stability within the staff. If your staff is there, you want stability to be able to have this comfortability between the player and the position coach, right? right. And so they talk a lot about that. They also talk about the travel. They talk about how you don't really have a home because you're only home for four months and then yeah. you're on the road for seven or eight yeah. and you have all those different things and you're in hotel rooms and in college you have a home. Yeah. Now you have a recruiting aspect of it. So they go into a whole bunch of stuff. If you haven't read it, go to our athletic and read it. If you haven't read it and you don't want to read it, we have Eno coming on in uh, two minutes, hopefully, hopefully two minutes. Um, and he will talk more about what went into this article, you know, the insight that he has on it. And then the seven o'clock hour. We'll give you the audio book as opposed to. Yeah, we'll give you the cliff yeah, notes. Yeah, the, you know. Cliff notes. You can just listen and instead audio. of read it. Cliff notes by the audio book. Exactly. Um, and then the seven o'clock hour, we have uh, our guy. Jonathan. Jay Johnson. Jonathan. Jonathan. What is Jay short for? <laughs> Jonathan. You think Jay, Jay is short for Jonathan? Maybe. J A Y is short for Jonathan? Is that just a name? J A Y <laughs> is short for Jonathan. Maybe. No. No. Okay. Jay Johnson coming on the seven o'clock hour. He actually told me to Jonathan text him Johnson. at six fifteen to Pull remind the him. There. Um, did you, can you please send him a link? A link. I did. Uh, you sent Jay Johnson a link. Jonathan Johnson. Jonathan Johnson. Uh, <laughs> That's not who we want oh. to talk to. You? Uh, let's say you want to say seven fifteen. He just texted me. Sure. The sausages, um, slight flex getting a text from Jay. Only he actually oh. called me today. I sent him a couple texts two days in a row and I didn't get a response. I'm like, damn, he must be busy. And so I'm driving back in my car today and I get my phone rings. It's Jay. I'm like, oh, what's up? And he's like, oh, man, I'm in Dallas. I'm flying back. Uh, I would love. I should have flew back with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. should have hopped on the plane. I would, I would love to come on. Um, you know, I'll be on probably the seven o'clock hour. So that's kind of what he's Is doing. Is he back in the, the red stick? He's back in. He's back in town. Perfect. Seven fifteen. Jay Johnson. Seven fifteen. Just confirmed. Um, big orange juice guy. Big orange juice guy. Have we asked him about that? You won't have a bit. You won't have no, a big glass. Just I need to on, ask this guy. Just sitting up there and see if he notices it. God, what if he just can't? He can't focus. What He's if, like, oh my god. What if? Yeah. Then other teams start doing it. They just start having orange juice in the dugout, and he can't focus. That would be terrible. Don't do that. Um, but I'm excited. This is the first time we've talked to him since the portal. Been he's been cooking the portal since the guys have transferred. The draft is nine days away. Yeah. First round of the draft is going to be televised on ESPN. Yeah. Good for that. Good for them. That's always good for the kids. Uh, also, why is the Major League Baseball draft so poorly done? It's terrible. I got invited to go to the MLB Network. I said, nope. No. Nope. Not Where is it? That. In New York. Oh. I went um, to it one time the year I was the year after I got drafted. After when I was to hurt. the network. Yeah, when I was hurt, so they made me do the. Uh, like the, the team, like the, the announcing thing, I think, if I remember. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to announce the pick. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I, yeah, I said no. No thanks. Yeah. Thanks, but no thanks. I want to be with my oh, family. Oh, he emailed me back, too. Be, look, at, look at us. Hey. Hey. Um, but draft is in nine days. It's going to be fun. Some of these guys' lives are going to be changed forever. Some of these guys aren't going to be extremely happy about falling in the draft. The draft mm -hmm. is kind of a crapshoot. You don't really know what's going to happen. But regardless... The first round, they are going to be uh, taking the next step in their career, and it's going to be extremely exciting for them. Um, last thing I want to get to before we really get to the meat and potatoes of the show. Uh, I was going back and forth, texting with people who have been asking and tweeting at us, how can you watch Team USA play? You know, they're playing in Amsterdam uh, for a week or so. Yeah. They're playing a bunch of different teams. They're out there now. I've been, I got sent the schedule. Now it's a six hour difference. Is that what I said? Is that what I said to you? Uh, I wouldn't listen to that part. Okay. I think it's a six hour difference. I'll have to look at the time, maybe a little longer than that. I'll confirm. But you got the schedule of when the games were played and we got sent the link to the live stream. So 
Is, do you think this is a legal link? Because this is sketchy as hell. I don't know. I was just that's what I was. Hulkball softball TV. Trey Morgan's mom tweeted at us that same link. So okay. Okay. Be good. There you go. Because that seems like something I would. So we have the links. Trey Morgan's mom game. watches too. Well, well she's on seven Twitter, hours at least. Plus seven. Seven. Yeah. Seven hours. Sep. Sep. Seven. Five. Five, five beers. beers? He knows. There's one person that knows. Should I, should I, should I tell the story? Yeah, we'll leave it. We'll leave, we'll leave it for another day. We'll leave it for another day. That's a great story. Yeah, it's, a great it's actually story. better. It's yeah, actually you know better both, when you, you know both. You know both people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, it's, yeah. it's better when you have him in person because he's a very big denier of the story. Oh yeah, of course. Denies all the stories that I ever yeah, had. Yeah, very big one of this one. Yeah. Uh, the other half of that story. Um, our friend yeah. is going to get another one of our friends who is probably going to make the all-star team to come on the show, hopefully during the all-star break. <clears throat> yeah. That is another tease. Um, the friend that may be coming did not come to LSU, did not go to high school. I mean, did not go to college, just high school. But he but enjoys his he time. Is, he loves LSU. He enjoys his time here. He enjoys his time yeah. in Baton Rouge, and he is an adapt, adopted LSU fan, yeah. and we love to have him on board. And so you'll see him. And he is a hero of, of Lloyd. He brought a championship to the Chicago Cubs, and I can't wait because he's an awesome interview. He's very fun. Big on uh, card roulette, like whenever you go to the bar and then uh, you grab everybody else's card. Credit card clearly, roulette. Yeah, and he's clearly the one that should be paying for stuff. He's like, ah, why don't we get some of my buddy's cards? Yeah, just in case. Just in case. Just in case. Usually that make you sweat I, a little bit. You see, I've done that three times, and all three times the richest person at the table always paid. They all their card always got picked. Do you think that they do that on purpose? Like have a no, I mean the, the the waitress picks or the waiter pick, whoever it is picks. But I don't know. I don't know this guy. Hopefully, this guy knows. Oh, he's in. Oh, he's in. Okay, we are going to take a thirty second break. Meet you know what? It just his. I love it. the color of his room is very baseball. Oh. Everything. We will, we'll be back. You're watching Mike. Baseball. We're watching Mike Up. Brought to you by Sterling Automotive. I can hear you. You can't hear me? Okay. It's Eno. Eno. Saris. <laughs> I take some sabis. <laughs> At Rejuvamy, we specialize in me medically monitored hormone replacement therapy, giving you the energy you need for all life's challenges. We can help get your day started. One, two, one, two. We can help with those long work days, and we can even make your nights longer. Rejuvamy, let us be your age defying clinic. Restore me, refuel me, rejuvamy. Welcome back to Miked Up. We are brought to you by Sterling Automotive. Um, I mentioned before at the start of the show, if you have not list, or not read the article by Eno Saris from the, from the Athletic about Wes Johnson and his decision to come to LSU and the waves that it, could kind of cre it can create in professional baseball, you should. Um, if you haven't and you don't want to read it and you want the cliff notes from the band himself, Eno Saris is on our show right now. 
from the athletic. You know, thank you for so much for coming. I know you got family in town. I'm not going to keep you too long, but I appreciate this. I love the article, love the insight, and have a million questions for you if you don't mind. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. I'll just hope that they're quiet for a little bit so we can yeah. do this. No, well, look, I won't keep you long. Um, going through the article, you know, you've got you got quotes from a, a, a bunch of, you know, execs, front office guys, and it just seemed like it was kind of a mixed bag of emotions on what to expect, what not to expect. Um you know, for me, I obviously went through college and I played professional baseball. The the thing that resonated most with me is the teams don't value or seem to value coaching all that much, right? And for me, I, I feel like it should be opposite. I feel like you should – the continuity and the chemistry and, and being comfortable with your players, I think that, sh that should matter in the long run, but it doesn't. Is that Was that a big reason why Wes Johnson decided to – move on to college or was it a little bit more than that? Yeah, I think it's super complicated. He talked about his family and when we talked to, to, to different coaches, and, you know, in the college game and in the professional game, uh, there was some debate about whether or not like working in college was any easier uh, because you've got recruiting, you know, and recruiting is this, this extra season of stuff you've got to do on top of all the other coaching duties. However, uh, you know, from some of my reporting and what I understand, you know, you can make um, promises to somebody and say, well, you, you're not going to handle all the recruiting. You're going to be, you're going to do like 30% of it or 20% of it. There's, there's ways that you can make that like more enticing to somebody as part of the package. And then on top of that, like you just, the fact is as a college guy, you you have your head on your own pillow as much, right. uh, as much more because you just, that's just how the season works. So, you know, if he values just sleeping at home more, then that could be part of why he took it. But at the same time, I think that the, the compensation package is just right. larger, you know, yeah. uh, between the money he can get from camps uh, and the incentives and in the base salary, the, the, our reporting had it at about a 750K. Um, you know, we didn't find any other major league coaches that were making that. Uh, afterwards, I got some feedback from some other execs saying, Oh, maybe Brant Strong makes that, you know, guy at the top, top right, of, the, right. of, of the coaching carousel, you know, like basically a living legend when it comes to pitching coaching. Um, and he's been in the league a long time, so he's been getting little raises. And so maybe he makes that. But it's still kind of notable that, like, college took a guy and is paying him just about as much as the, the, the highest paid pitching coach uh, in professional baseball. And I Part of that, I think, is just they have to hire so many coaches. Yeah. And I and I think that they want to value coaching, but they got to hire single-A pitching coach, pitching coordinator, assistant pitching coordinator, director of pitching, major league, all the way up to major league pitching coach, assistant, bullpen pitching coach. Right. And in a college, you can be like, hey, Wes Johnson, you're going to make the plan. You're going to be the man. You're going to say – you're going to tell, you know, all the kids what it's like. You're going to tell the camps – uh, what to do and you're and it's going to be how you say it is you don't have to talk to the front office and the r&d department and, and make sure it's okay like you're going to be in control of everything you're going to sleep more at home at night and we get to pay you like like the combination of eight coaches you know? right no doubt and i so, think i think what i think the crazy thing about and you mentioned it in your article and i think the like the, the common fan who doesn't really know the ins and outs and behind the scenes stuff would, would, would expect Oh, well, it's a professional organization. You know, they have the best facilities and they have all the money to give to their players and the coaches and they have all this. And that's not the case. There's a handful of teams that, yeah, their facilities are extremely nice and they take care of their, their staff and they take care of their players. But the vast majority of the teams in the big leagues don't put invest that money in the technology or into the facilities or into the players. And in college, especially high level college in the SEC, you look at all the facilities being built. You look at all the indoor facilities and all the indoor workout stuff and all the cages and all of the technology they have. They, it's, it, it's, it, to me, it's crazy to think that a college team is going to offer more resources to these college kids than a professional team would offer to the guys who are at the top of their game. Like, I'm not I'm not trying to put down college, but I think it's a little embarrassing. No, no, <laughs> look, and that's, and that's what you would think, right? It's kind of crazy, you know? <laughs> like, why, why do I see – maybe some of those teams just think that, Hey, driveline is going to do this for us. There are these labs that are out there, you know, uh, pro performance, uh, P3, you know, all these different labs 
maybe we can just let them do it uh, and, and we don't have to pay for it as much. Uh, but there are smart teams, the Brewers, the Dodgers, the Yankees. They've built labs. Uh, they've built these facilities. But Wake Forest is kind of cool. Like Wake Forest has a, a hospital attached to it and a university attached to it. And they have this lab and they can bring in doctors from the from the uh, hospital and they can bring in grad students that are studying this. So there are some unique advantages that schools have kind of unpaid labor. (laughs) (laughs) All right. All right. Um, But, you know, they got these kids that want to they want to put their work out in front of major league teams and want to get and you get jobs uh, out of. You could be a grad student and help a team, help Wake Forest, be do analytics for LSU, and then and get a job with a team afterwards. So it is, uh, you know, it's not totally unpaid. Like you still get some good out of it. But you know, there are some advantages that colleges have. But I also think it's still kind of embarrassing for I, look, I teams agree. To, I mean, listen, to... I I have played. Listen, I I played on the road against the White Sox in Chicago, and we are hitting in the visiting cages outside with no heater in April. Like, that makes zero sense to me, right? And now I go play at LSU or I go play at Arkansas, and I'm hitting in a nice, cozy indoor cage that has four full-length cages, and I have the computer and I have my swing, and it's just like it doesn't make the any sense. blast motion. You, yeah, yeah, it doesn't make any the sense. tracks, you know. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, the White Sox in particular have not invested in that sort of right. thing. And I, and they, they don't seem to value coaches. So they're, they're one of those organizations that's kind of, I don't know, is it old school? Is it behind the times? Is it, uh, you know, they, they do get good players. Yep. You know, they, like the White Sox do have plenty of good players. Maybe they just, they're about scouting and they just think, you know, these guys are going to advance or not advance based on their own, you know, if they can do it, you know, like I, I just think coaches are so important. I and, agree. And, I agree. And they can create, they can create a like situation where you feel safe to try new things. You can feel safe to say something back and be like, you know, I don't know if that's right for my swing. You get it like a collaborative environment. It takes right. feel, but it takes knowledge of all of the best data and tech and like, it's a really hard job because you have to be good at speaking and connecting with people and also reading and, and knowing all about the data and tech and like kind of staying on top. It's, it's, I think it's one of the coolest jobs. Well, in I think, sports. You, I think you hit the nail on the head. Better. I think you hit the nail on the head about being collaborative. Like a lot of guys, especially for like more of the old school guys is, Hey, it's my way. This is the best way to do it. And <laughs> you're going to have to do that. And now you look at some of the other guys and I, you know, I've, I've come across a lot of the younger guys or a lot of the new age hitting coaches and, it's more about, hey, let's talk this through. What are you feeling? What are you trying to feel? Because a lot of the same things are being taught. It's just the terminology is a little different, and you just got to figure out what clicks with the guy. So I think you hit the nail on your head. Is a collaborative effort is, is a huge thing behind the, with the coaches. It's still important also to know about the data because and the research because what's cool about doing these biomechanical assessments that you can do at Wake Forest, you can do if you have a nice lab like this, is that you can do a biomechanical assessment and then you can say, okay, we want to change hip shoulder separation. We want to do this, right? And then you can actually try a drill and you can have them doing a drill for a while and then you can do the assessment again and then you can know if the drill actually works. Right. You know, right. we've done towel, we done, as pitchers, we've done towel drills for years. The towel drill does nothing. <laughs> right, nothing so, there. Yeah, that's it. It's just this, for sure. Like, the towel drill does nothing for you. Yeah. But there is a drill called the janitor drill as a pitcher where you uh, show your back uh, to the, you, you basically are exaggerating, over exaggerating your delivery. So you show your back. And that's actually been proven to help uh, hip shoulder separation. And we've also proven that hip shoulder separation adds to velo. So right. it's like, hey, there's here's a drill that we know works. It does what you need to do, and I can tailor this to you. Yep. And yes, you can. I want to also listen to you because if it if it doesn't make you feel good, I'm not going to make you do something that doesn't feel good because then that's injury and that's that's bad stuff. So, you know, definitely two way street. But uh, like just knowing what all the research says, knowing how the data works and how the tech works, and then also being able to connect with people. Why wouldn't that be worth a, a, a lot of money? Like, right. wouldn't why wouldn't pay right. somebody that that's right. that's a lot of different skills you know right that's that's one thing that's kind of always been mind-blowing to me in the game uh question i got for you is kind of switching back to the west johnson move do you see a move you know kind of as like noteworthy and highlighter as that move is i wouldn't say kind of like taking you know major league baseball by storm but do you see a move like that kind of open the door for 
these higher level college teams that have these TV deals that are making a little bit more money to kind of cherry pick off the top some of these really good pitching coaches and or hitting coaches at the top of the game and bringing them back into a college uh, playing field a little bit. Do you see that kind of? Yeah. Thinking? We don't, I don't know exactly how many years Wes got. We heard it was multiple years. That is actually a, as big a part as the actual compensation because I, I did some work uh, where I was just looking at how long has uh, the how long a major league pit, hitting coaches and pitching coaches been in their jobs, right. like their tenure. Like how long have they been there? The average is a year and a half. It's crazy. That's wild. A year and That's a half. That's crazy. You are going to be fired next year. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. <laughs> if you work in the major leagues, like you, the, 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 just the average t turnover time is a year and a half. So, uh, so I think if if you're a guy that hey, you just got fired. Or even if you're in a job and you're like, man, they're just not hitting this year. Right. I I'm going to be the fall guy. Right. It's not looking you know? good for me. Even though right. we right. like we even like think of your Ethan Katz with the White Sox right now. Right. Yeah. Ethan Katz has done a really good job with Dylan Cease. In the past, he's done a good job with Lucas Giolito. Giolito is not right now being great, but I think they're working together and it's looking a little better and there's going to be some some there. I think Ethan Katz is an amazing pitching coach but if they don't win this year do you think they're going to fire tony larusa first or right. ethan katz right. fall guys you gotta get the fall guys go first yeah so i think uh i think if you, you know we've seen some guys say no kirk sarlos uh, said no to a major league job uh there's a couple other pitching coaches i, I just can't think of them off the top of my head i think uh maybe a guy in michigan there's there's some pitching coaches who said no uh, yeah. to the major league. So that's already happening a little bit. Right. And I think we're going to see some guys, you know, the, the interesting thing was I talking to a major league bench coach. I talked to a major league pitching coach. I talked to a, a major league pitching coordinator. They all were like, they had their eye on a job. Of course. You know of course. I mean? of <laughs> course they were all like, have you heard anything about USC? <laughs> <laughs> You get they're at their ear. Hey, can you put a good word in for me? Can you let me know? Yeah. You're a headhunter. Yeah. I love it. They all like they literally and like, you know, or I was the finalist. Like I was I was talking to one guy and he's like, I was the finalist for one of those jobs that you were talking about. I was like, Oh. Yeah. I didn't even I didn't even know that. Right. 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 They don't want it out there because they, you know, they'd rather have their, their job they'd rather have some job security. But right. they like they are looking, man. They're of listening. Why wouldn't you? Well, and that's what I kind of wanted to yeah. ask. Mikey asked, why wouldn't you look? And I think that people, are they undervaluing how much time they're going to have to spend on the road when it comes to recruiting? Because they've been in Major League Baseball for so long that the, the, the schedules understand how they're different. But it also seems to be almost more work in college baseball if you want to be successful at it. Because that's the lifeblood of every program, mm -hmm. which you add in name, image, and likeness. And now the transfer portal, you're working 12 months a year. Yeah, man, uh, that's a, it's a really good point. It's definitely a longer season. And there were some coaches that just straight up said to me, Hey, I like to grind hard and then get out and have like three months, you know, or two months where I'm just, I'm off the grid. I'm Playing sailing, golf I'm every day. golfing, I'm yeah. hunting, I'm whatever. I'm right. just out, you know? Um, and that doesn't really exist in college. I think you, there's like that winter break where you're supposed to take a break uh it depends on you know you ask coach to coach in college do they actually take their whole winter break right. or do they work during winter break uh and then there's the recruiting season which is rough i do know that for example the, at lsu the, the other job that's open is the recruiting coordinator right um and you know i think you know i think part of this is probably like hey wes the recruiting coordinator is going to be the 100 percent guy you know and you're going to be the guy who maybe seals the deal like you can sell him something like Hey, you can seal the deal on like the top ten, top fifteen guys, you know, uh, and and arms. Yeah. You know, you, we don't need you to come out to the, to to recruit the bats. So you know, we'll we'll try to keep your exposure to a minimum. So that's that's going to be part of the conversation for any of the guys who come over from the big leagues. They're going to be like, hey, how can you minimize how much recruiting I have to do? Right. We, we're about to have. Sorry, did you have one? Mm -hmm. No, we're about to have Jay Johnson on. I'm going to ask this, but I don't know if I would get the stock coach answer. If I feel like I get maybe a little bit more information from you, is <laughs> how did this actually come about? Like, how was he able to go into a like? How does that conversation even 
come to fruition. Like they're they don't really know each other from what I've heard. They've crossed paths, but it's like they've friends that have coached together. How was he able to get to a major league baseball pitching coach in the middle of the year that's in first place and convince him to come to LSU at, with you know essentially they're not in the middle of a season right now? Like you pick up and move. I, that's a, that's an excellent question. You know, I talked to major league coaches who were like there's there's something a little weird about that because i would feel like if anybody contacted me i'd have to refer them to my major league team you know right right um and <laughs> because because um because of the antitrust laws uh they have rules in major league baseball you can't have in other industries like for example here in california you can't you can't say no apple you can't talk to i'm at google and you can't talk to any of my guys you know, you can't do that in regular industry, but because of the antitrust exemption in baseball, you can say, hey, you can't poach my guys. You can't, if you, you can't talk to them. And there are these, there are these sort of like other rules where it's like, you can only kind of talk to my guy if you're going to give him a higher title, right? So right. like, you can't poach my AGM unless you're going to make him a GM. And, uh, and so, you know, by those rules, these don't, you know, they're just, he's going to be a pitching coach in college. Yeah, I don't get he's that. Not, he's not the head, he's not the, the head guy, you know? So uh, it, it, it violates some of the unspoken rules uh, in baseball when it comes to hiring. Um, and so I, I, I'm sure the twins are not super happy about it. They kind of came down like on a plane flight to, to, to Cleveland where nobody knew about it. And there's, you know, they were texting from the tarmac, you know, to some of uh, some of my friends that report for the athletics. So it's like, you know, the, there was uh, there was a lot of confusion, a lot of surprise. Um, there's probably even more to the story and more to tell. Right. I can't tell you exactly how he was contacted, but I can tell you that it was weird. You know, there, now, was, there was something weird about it because, you, you know, you should have the twins should have known. Yeah. Right. Now he's right. and obviously it's, it's well documented how good of a pitching coach is. The job he's done with Chris Archer, I feel like, is kind of evident on how good of a – now, obviously, it goes into, like, Chris – I was a former teammate of, of Archer's. I know how hard he works and how much time and effort he puts into his game and his body and making sure that he's, he's healthy. But, you know, if, over the last, you know, four, three, four years, he hasn't been the guy that he probably wanted to be. And then, you know, he goes and, and, plays, and plays for Wes, and Wes has done a really good job of, of kind of getting him and riding the ship. So you obviously know it's good, but, you know, the, the, being a first-place team – in the big leagues, can't feel good to have your guy getting poached and uh, going back down to college. And I think maybe having a little bit of experience in college baseball before, um, you know, took away a lot of the the uncertainty for him to go back. Yeah, I mean that that may be how they they contact him too. Yeah. You know, some contacts, some fellow contacts right. from when he was in, in in college ball. I you know I think you know even though Dylan Bundy isn't having his greatest season, Dylan Bundy is you know, was coming off of the mat, you know, yep. like he was, he really had one of the worst season of his career last year. So, um, you know, coaching him was, was good. And then he's doing a really good job with the youngsters too. Uh, Bailey over was doing great with him and Joe Ryan. So uh, I think he has good feel, you know, that's, that's his good feel. And he obviously the, 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 the twins have a pretty good um, uh, reputation when it comes to yeah. being smart with their data and, 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 and smart with their pitching plan. So, uh, uh do you, you know, follow, I think, I think he's the, 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 the real deal. Do you follow the, the drafts in nine days? Are you, a, do you follow the draft or you, you focus more on the guys in the big leagues? Well, you know, it's a, it's hard for me, man. I'm a national writer. Uh, yeah. Um, and you know, and I gotta know, like, it's crazy for me. I go into these clubhouses. I I have to go into uh, it's a new clubhouse. I go to two new clubhouses a week, you know. Right. And it's like new a bunch of new players, and you know I, it's hard enough for me to know all the major league players, and then I have to know kind of uh, you know the top ten prospects for every team. Um, There's a lot. And then you know you, you guys were talking about how the draft isn't um, isn't amazing in baseball, and. I think, you know, they're, they're trying to make it a better event and maybe there are some problems with their coverage, but there's just the fact that like, if you're drafted in football, I'm going to see you play next Exactly. Year. Yep. You That's know, very true. And you know, if you're drafted in baseball, I might, I might, see you may, you, you might see in, me. Yeah, exactly. Four years. <laughs> exactly. Maybe. Cause there's, we're going to, we have a big Even prospect the top guys, you know, right. We have a big prospect to hear from, you know, he was at Arizona, he came transferred here and Jacob Barry, and he's supposed to be a top 10 pick. And, 
you know, I was going to talk to you a little bit about that, but obviously there's a lot on your plate. And if you don't know, I wasn't going to bring up that question, but he was great for us. He kind of got banged up. Particular knowledge. Yeah, 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 right, right. right. Um, but I no. do think he's going to go in the top in the top ten. Yeah, yeah, that's what we, we think too. Too. You got one more? Yeah, and I got one more for you. Um, you know, Thaddeus. I got one <laughs> more. Um, if you, we so talked, stupid. we talked about the money a little bit earlier in this conversation. But obviously that kind of report has been disputed. Then y'all went back and like, look, no, we have this kind of verified through our sources and the athletic does a pretty good job of being like, you're not going to put it out if it's not true because it's a reputable source. How did that get sorted and how much digging did y'all have to do to find out kind of the, the way that the underbelly of college baseball works when it comes to paying position coaches? Yeah, that was actually the first uh, part of the reporting we had to do. We had to just confirm that number. We had to, we had to check with Penn. Uh, you know, we had to check with other people, you know, it, it, I, nobody gave us the entire picture. Right. <laughs> right. Of course, so of like, course. I'm not saying that, like, I mean, not like saying we asked him, he gave us one number. We're like, oh, that's it. You know? So like, you know, we did hear about the base salary, which is 388. Um, but uh, we also talked to, I talked to people that were, that ran camps, um, yep. you know, for these, for, for, for an actual, uh, a, a top 10 team this year. So I talked to a guy who ran a camp, four top 10 teams and he told me how the money money works and he said his camp was making like a million plus bucks and you know uh, the you know that was that was uh, was given to the 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 volunteer that runs yeah. it you know to basically have a salary right. uh and then split between the coaches right you know so you know you only have three paid coaches yep so it, you know if, if lsu is making anywhere close to a million bucks off their camps then like hey yeah. i can i can put some math together for for west there and then um, you know, they used to only give these, um, they used to only give the incentives for like, you know, making college word series or, or right. certain ERA. And so they, they, they used to only kind of give those to the head coaches. Uh, but in our reporting, uh, talking to other, uh, pitching coaches in, in college and other coaches and, and other head coaches in college, they're like, yeah, yeah. Mo like more, we're having to use those incentives more and more to kind of, uh, compete financially with the big programs. Um, you know, I appreciate you coming on here. I, I kept you a little bit longer than I wanted to. I know you got family in town. Uh, I, no I am. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next few years as far as big league guys coming to college or vice versa. Um, but like I said, huge fan of the article. Thank you so much for coming on. You've been you were great. Uh, as the baseball season unfolds a little bit longer, a little bit go. I would love to maybe get you back on and talk more big league baseball, not just. The, the transition from big league to college. No problem. Y'all are fun. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thank Thanks you, man. Who's going to win the world series real quick. We're sponsored by Caesars. <laughs> the Yankees are a juggernaut, man. They you are. see them? They're they all got to like stay healthy. It's the first time, <laughs> first time they've stayed healthy in a long time. So they got to stay healthy, but yes, I agree with you. That's true. Yeah. I agree with you. All right. See you guys. All right. Yep. All right, see see you. Brother. See you. Um, he's great. He's great. He was, that was awesome. He had family in town. What does that mean? Oh, well, he said he had a bunch of family in town. That's what he told me. Yeah, just, I was being... like, do you think they're hanging on from the Fourth of July? Yeah, like, they're July yeah, Fourth vendors still. still a little over, little over, little over, little over. Little Welcome a little bit. Maybe. Milking a little longer. He, uh, I mean, that I mean, was he's awesome. in California. I mean, national writer from California. I'm glad he was yeah. able to come on. He was very open about coming on too. He was good. He was good. Um, gonna be interesting to see this though, because if the if Major League Baseball doesn't start figuring out a way to pay these guys, I know they don't value the coaches, but like. A, Bet you the twins valued this guy. That's why I asked. The twins I was like, hey, you think this will kind of cherry pick? This will start cherry yeah, and he kind of mentioned a little bit in the article, and like they weren't, he wasn't sure about it. But yeah. I mean, hey, listen, if your top coaches if are leaving, I, if I could offer you basically what you're making now, tell you to sleep at home more, tell you you don't have to do a ton of recruiting, and if you don't mind recruiting either, or even, or even, if, or even yeah. that. But like, if I could tell you you don't have to do a ton of recruiting, and I could tell you, hey, you got this job for the next four five, or five years. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Man, there's a lot of guys going to be like, well, Why I'm going to get fired next that? year here. Right. And, and then when you mentioned, like, y'all talked a little bit about the facilities, that's all of that kind of blows my mind that Major League Baseball is still so antiquated in it's crazy. how they treat yeah. people. There some, there's a lot of places like that. Right. Well, it's they even, make all this money. They don't put yeah. the money back into the player a lot of times. Yeah. It's crazy they don't keep to me. it. Yeah. It's crazy to me. Yeah. It's awesome for the this for is, those but guys, is, but it's so ignorant. It seems yeah. like you don't. They don't want to win. Like, oh, there goes our pitching coach. That was lost a college <laughs> team. Why do you there think you that we had a lockout this year? Like, all of these reasons are part of it. Like, you know, well, there's more to it, but like, they all stems from hey, 
you're not trying to win. You're not putting. You're not investing your money back into the player. And I mean, this is hey, just, two Lloyd, two. I want to say two years, maybe three years ago. And don't quote me on the exact number. I think it was like seventeen or eighteen teams that were seventy-five million dollars or more. This is kind of a different talk, but seventy-five million dollars or more under the luxury tax threshold. Basically saying like, hey, here's salary cap to get to, and there was 18 teams or more that ain't even 70 within 75 million dollars. But making all the profit. Yep. Like that. That's the literally. If sharing. that ain't punting at the beginning of the season, I don't know what is. Good you know? night. No, so like, no. I mean, it's kind of been that way for a while in the game. And maybe but, Jay, maybe Jay will give us a little bit of insight about how how this came to be and how he got to him and how he hired him. Um, he did tell me. Off the record. Oh, I mean, OTR? this doesn't. OTR. He told me that. Wes is coming in town soon. And he might come on here and explain he, his side. Exactly. We'll have him on the show. Let's just pull up at his house. We can just go his. Yeah, we I, wonder, go I wonder where he's going to live. <laughs> Got money to live wherever he wants. He might be next to you. What do you mean? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, the light might be gone. Uh, no, the lot's already gone. It's already so, built on right now. Been putting nails in my tire every other week. Mm. Oof. Bullshit. That's tough. Mm. Tough. I just had to get a whole new tire. You never go talk. You never go like a nice conversation with people working there. Hey, uh, pick up your nails. Hey, fella. Pick them up. Let's go ahead and clean this thing up, huh? <laughs> Dude, there's nothing worse. And you don't know it. And then you see tire PSA, PSI low on your tire. I'm like, damn it. There's a nail in there again. Do you have the run flats? Mm-mm. Where'd you get in the side or in the tread? It was too close to the too close to the mm-hmm. sidewall, so I had to get a new tire. Hurts. Hurts, Hurts the most. Hurts does hurt the most, but. Jay's coming on at 715. We'll talk through we'll talk it through with him, see what happens. Could you imagine Wes in that poker game when he was on the plane and the news starts breaking and he's trying like, to keep oh, a straight already, face? I was already trying to keep a straight face. <laughs> now I am sweating. Everybody's checking their phone, they're looking at me. <laughs> and he's I'm, like this the whole time. I'm all in because I gotta fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a huge gift for us. For, yeah. L- for LSU. I won't say huge. for us. For LSU. No, no, that's that's true. Y'all are a lot We're money. us, but like, you know, it's those I mean, huge. I'm not playing for him. Um, but I heard he's awesome. I heard he's very personable. He just he's very confident in his ability to, to develop pitchers, and that's all you can ask. And I really thought you did a great job. The Chris Archer thing still is what resonates the most from that story to me. It's just like if you have the trust of your pitching staff, especially a pitcher who has been almost Cy Young level and then falls back down, then he's able to work with the pitching coach and listen. And like Wes Johnson was able to get through to him and make him better again. I think that that is a huge coup for an LSU pitching for staff sure. that had struggled mightily. I but has a lot of talent. Year. Has a yeah. lot of talent. Has a lot of ability on the staff. Has a lot of guys coming in. And now you have a guy that can put all the pieces together and fix the weak link that we had last year as and that was starting pitching. And a guy that could do it in multiple ways. You'd yep. be, like he said, you'd be surprised when you get in baseball how many, how many people in the coaching side of it or it's literally – like my way or the highway, and they write you off, and it's and it becomes the the note that's reported as it gets sent up the ladder that you know that it doesn't work that way, and it's it's crazy how much of it is not a collaborative effort. I mean, like effort and guys working together trying to figure out how can I get each and every other player better. Like, what can I do? How can this happen? You talk to me, me talk to you. Let's let's figure it out. There's there's so not as much as that as you would believe. But it makes sense that there's not because those, those coaches don't know if they're going to have a job next year. They're like. Well, so I, I would rather if I'm going well, here's, here's, here's to here's here's almost issue. do it my way because I don't I don't have any job security. I think I think I think a lot I think a lot of them try to in a, in a, in a way sort of team by team wherever you are try to attach their name to a person that right. is doing well right. because now it becomes a well I got this guy I fixed right him. yeah so I keep going because he keeps going you know what I mean and that's kind of it's kind of the the Whoever, muddy side yeah. of how it's run. I mean, here's here's the deal. Whoever's right? with Alex Lang. Right. Manager, yeah, managers come Literally. in and out. Cool. They leave, they go, they, they don't stay for very long. If a manager hires a staff and he gets fired, their staff's getting fired. Yeah. Majority of the time, right? Like in Detroit in 2017, after um our manager got like can, Brad Osmus got fired and finished out the year, lame duck coach, finished he got fired in like the beginning of September, had one month of coach. Yeah. The entire staff stayed yep. with the new with with Ron Gardenhire became became the new manager the next year, and the whole staff stayed, which is very rare to have happen, right? And then you know over time, as Gardy was there, some of the guys started not were not there anymore, right? They started leaving, and then because Gardy wasn't winning and he had some pressure, so now he fired. Okay, bring in our own guys didn't work out. Whole new regime, everybody fired, all new staff. So. 
it's just it's crazy because the turnaround, like the turnaround, the, the, to stick in the big leagues as a, as a player is tough, but obviously to stick in the big leagues as a coach is even harder. Like and the it, the thing that's enticing to these major league coaches, right, is having service time. So here's what I mean about that, right? When you get to ten plus years in the big leagues, oh, Ricky got tenure. Yeah, what you mean, Ricky got tenure? He got fifteen years. <laughs> So when you when, you're, when you get season. to ten full seasons in Major League Baseball, now they go strict days. Yeah, it's not just Literally like oh days. I got called up for, you know, three months and that's a full year. Like no, no it's strict to <laughs> amount of days. And once you get to ten full seasons, you're fully vested. You get full pension, right? Which is great. Like the pension's a big, big pension plan. And if you were a Major League player back in the day, let's say you play in the '80s. And you got to be a coach, and you, you made your way up, and you know, I say in the 90s now, because, and you became a coach, and you, you're coaching now, and you get to the big leagues. Well, you get to the big leagues, and you get put on that pension plan. It adds to your time, your service time as a player. So if you have pension as a, as a coach, it adds to your service time as a, base, as, as a big league player. But since you, your pension plan was what it was in the 90s, it's different than it is now. So if you get to the big leagues as a coach now, your pension plan, you take now, you now get the new pension plan, which is more money for you. So that's why a lot of these players go in there and try to make it. But the caveat to all this is not every big league coach on the staff is on their pension, like uh, is able to get pension, right? You, uh, same thing with college baseball, only three paid coaches, right? Well, not, you have the first base coach, third base coach, bench coach, manager, um, you know, Bullpen coach, system bullpen coach, all these guys. Not all those guys are getting pension. There's probably only three or four of those guys getting actual pension. And so, you know, what's enticing is 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 that, and not everybody's getting that. And so it's like, well, I'm not getting paid, I'm doing all this, and I'm not getting pension. I'm out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's it's a it's an interesting dynamic. I think people don't realize how. You don't realize how that how antiquated Major yeah. League Baseball is. It's unbelievable yep. that you don't yep. have a heated indoor facility in Chicago. It's like the, it's like the Bengals. It's like the Bengals. No right. indoor facility until now. Until yeah. Until so you got Joey, there, B- Joey like, B. Oh, shit, we gotta win. Speaking of, you see him at the at the fight. He doesn't miss, bro. He's just like the coolest dude in the world. I think. I mean, he he gets it, dude. He ha- he carries himself. He's a baller. Works his ass off. Got new teeth. Those one to be like in the spotlight, not the spotlight. But like everything he does, he's in the spotlight. He doesn't mean to. He doesn't try to. He just. No, that's what I'm saying. No, he's, he's not a, like he's a big. He's just a fan that wants to watch people punch yeah, each other. Joe, in the face. Yeah, cool, he does hold himself in UFC. Jesus. And he's then there he just all shows the up and I love UFC fights. Really. Have you ever been to a UFC fight? The best sporting event to have ever best sporting event I've ever been to was a UFC fight. Was it the one I went to in Alexandria <laughs> at the Coliseum? <laughs> the first first punch, first fight, Superman punch out the gate, gave the guy a seizure, had to start the thing had to stop the thing for thirty five minutes. And I was like, I don't want to be here at all anymore. I just saw this guy fucking die. And I was like, Well this is a, this is they're fighting. But if they're they're, fighting. They're, I don't think there's gonna be rules in the old Ellic. Coliseum. I don't think so either. An unsanctioned UFC fight. I think it was I, a little bit different. Yeah, mine was. <laughs> you think Joey Burrow wasn't in my, the fight? Experience. The fight that I experienced was McGregor's first championship fight. Oh, uh, that would be different. The, yeah. the best, the best Mendes. fight that I, the no, best against fight that uh, I Aldo, the swing, the backhand punch, so fifteen second seconds. Yeah, that, was that was the second one. Yeah, well, he uh, won the second. interim title against Mendez. Yeah, yeah but like that his was first like real sporting event that I never experienced. It was great. Blacked out. No, no, I was there. He was there, yeah, just not at the there. fight because it was last. Only had two tickets. It was last minute. We invited him, but the post fight celebration was amazing. Oh, what did you do? You watched it on TV? Oh, yeah, I watched it from our hotel room. We yeah. had a thousand dollars. It was, it was, it was, it was a very nice seconds. hotel room. We had a, we had a very it was nice like hotel room. Thirteen seconds long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, the fights before fight. were awesome and then, too. Thirteen seconds and then, is a long time. Dude. Wait, and then the best part about it was is like <laughs> after I thought I was in like Jumanji or something. Like you know, like when with in in the middle of it. Well, obviously, still now, like if he fights, like the entire. Country of Ireland's coming over. Yeah. So he fights that, wins. We go out after, and we're, like, walking in the street, and there's legit Irish people riding each other's backs, hanging off a street sign, yeah, like, on the crazy. strip. I'm like, bro, this ain't real. Whenever right? he won, I had, there's probably four guys oh, that man. jumped on my back from the, like, three rows behind me. Like, they were nuts. It was great. And he was, we had a nice little $1,000 comped 
uh, room tab. The robe was really nice. You should that see Jared, me. That Jared, Jared took advantage you of that. Just, yeah, that's yours to <laughs> use. Yeah. You should see me. I was like, we, we had a nice, actually, boys, we had what our, you need? Our, yeah. our, we had a, we had a sweet, we had a sweet comp and they had a thousand dollar tab to the room comp. So Jared, we showed up and I say, we texted him and say, Hey, we're coming back. We'll have about an hour at the crib before we go out. Let's see if get we some bottles. Get some bottles yeah. brought up there. And, and we did. We probably had about $300 left. We had food. We got, we, it was it was a good time. It was a good time. Didn't pay for anything the whole weekend. It was awesome. It was a good weekend. Usually doesn't happen for dudes in Vegas. It was a good <laughs> <laughs> Usually doesn't happen that it way. Was but a it was great that was uh, that was my first Vegas trip, and it was. Uh, Is that still the best one? I mean, we've had some really good ones, but like that one was. We had a small group, and I think that was, we had three guys plus the guys we met. So I think that made it oh, yeah. a little bit out. a little bit easier. We met some other friends out there. Yeah, cool. And we didn't know we we're out there until they told us they were out there, and then. We jumped on their table. It was great. Thunderstruck. Chip and Dales have a great performance there. Glad y'all met them. Yeah, Magic Mike. We'll see Magic Mike. Oh, yeah, yeah that's what we did. <laughs> did <laughs> we, went really? to the we, we rode the roller coasters yeah. and everything. It was great. We did not go Any see part? Magic Mike. Uh, but it was fun. I Actually, my brother-in-law, Andrew. My insurance agent. Your insurance agent now. <laughs> should get a referral fee for that. <laughs> you should. Um, I... Uh, he talked Couldn't about, have been easier, by the way. He no. talked about he talked about not ever being in Vegas, so we probably should change that. What's the age of when you stop going? Never. Never? Because uh, there's Vegas. Never. You can do Vegas a whole bunch of different ways. Yeah, you can go there true. for the gambling. You can go there for the shows. Which shows are really, I've never or you never, can go there for the gambling. Or, yeah. Or <laughs> go for the, the gambling. <laughs> or you can go for the clubs and the gambling. Or you can go there for the summertime and pool parties. Like There's a whole bunch of different. And like when you're in Vegas, age does not matter. No. no, I'm just talking about mentally how taxing it is and like coming. Mm. See, I think we hit it a little differently. You go there with the mindset of I'm here for two, you think you two hit and it a half days, two days, three days, maybe. You think you hit it differently? Yeah, I do. Yeah? I do. I think my brain probably feels way different on the third day than y'all's brain. I don't know. I mean, sure. I think everybody's supposed to come home like a little yeah. beat up. Yeah. Real it's like up. team no sleep when you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, we're on the same page. Then. Yeah. Yeah. You sleep during the day. Yeah. Sleep when you die. What? 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 Huh? <laughs> um, sleep during the day. Yeah, I've never been in the summer to where there's pool parties. So like, I've only been during like November and December, or October and, and December, and like. You're eventing. The pool party wasn't open. Yeah. So like, you go out, you stay out all night, you go back to the hotel room, and like you sleep till eleven, then you, you know. They are on your ass now. We just got back from Vegas for a bachelor party. They don't let you. They're. Searching you, searching you. You're really not supposed to bring anything in there. What? And where? In Las Vegas, like into the. We went to like a, two clubs, went to a pool party, and then we went to a club at night. They really, they get in your grundle. They're searching to make That's sure. That's good. That's probably a good thing. Well, no, it's Las Vegas. I'm trying. I'm trying to. Oh, uh, it's, well, it's I mean, late. I mean, I'm tired. They're not gonna let you. I mean, they're not gonna. They're checking for that. Oh yeah. What do you? There's, there's always, there's you, get, you, need a, you need a satchel or like a little man pouch. <laughs> no, you do not. That's stopping me. No, you do not. You're an idiot. You are stupid. I didn't stupid. get the water. It you are it. stupid. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But I was nervous. Well, okay. Because <laughs> Johnson coming in 50 minutes. Let's take a little break. I'll ask him. If let's, take a, let's, take a little, let's take a little... 30 second minute break. Give some love to our sponsors. We're mic'd up. We are brought to you by Sterling Automotive. Also, and, and? wait, I'm not done. Also, because I got reprimanded today by my family member who donated these hats that we got. I got them. Jackie Boy's got them. You don't have one on. We also have hats. some shirts, and we are creating a store website from them to where we're going to put our all over merch for sale. Talking t shirts out of Lafayette. Shout out to them for. Hooking us up with all of our merchandise. We're going to continue to have some as we go and grow and continue to need some more stuff. We're talking about, we have a lot of things that we like to say that we're probably going to make into t-shirts. Once we once you build our cult following. Debacle. Debacle will be one of them. But, all right. Let's give love to our sponsors. We were watching Mike Up, brought to you by Starting Automotive. We'll be back in uh, one minute. One minute. One minute sounds fair. Is that good? Do people like it? We're looking to be the life of the tailgate. Check out Dosecki's mini kegs. 
Hold 16 beers, easy to tap, easy to pour, easy to chill. Check it out. Become a life of the party. You're welcome. Today's show is brought to you by Dos Equis. Here in Louisiana, we like to have a great time. If you're looking to be the life of the tailgate, check out Dos Equis Mini Kegs. Hold 16 beers, easy to tap, easy to pour, easy to chill. Check it out. Become a life of the party. You're welcome. Miked Up is brought to you by Law Offices of Lance Beal. Call them today, 337-991-6263. They know what it takes to win. Their practice areas include personal injuries, small business, family law, estate planning, with an emphasis in construction law. Your choice for reliable representation. 337-991-6263. Our What's for Lunch segment is brought to you by Doe's Eat Place. Maybe the best burger in town. If you're not looking for lunch, you're looking for dinner, go check out Doe's Eat Place. They have unbelievable choice of meats. They have unbelievable tamales. They have a great atmosphere, great vibes. If you're looking for a homey Louisiana type of atmosphere, but you're looking for high quality food, Doe's Eat Place is your spot. Go in the back bar, sit at the bar, have a couple drinks, watch some games, enjoy the atmosphere, enjoy the vibes. Check out Doe's Eat Place, the best place in Baton Rouge to get your meats. Hey y'all, it's Mikey from Miked Up. I want to talk a little bit about my friends down at Sterling Automotive in Lafayette. They're locally owned and operated for over 25 years. They have 13 locations, four in Opelousas, five in Lafayette, one in Broussard, two in Jennings, one in Crowley. They sell any type of car you could possibly find. Buicks, GMC, Ford, Lincoln, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Hyundai, Genesis, and Kia, along with five pre-owned locations. They have over 1,500 cars in inventory on site unbelievable service unbelievable people if you're like me and you're on the go they can sell and they can ship you cars up to 200 miles away if you're like me and you're always on the go they offer they offer complimentary Welcome back to Miked Up. It is 7.04. We have 11 minutes until Jay Johnson comes. It's been a little minute since we talked to our boy Jay Johnson. Know, we're also, we're brought to you by Sterling. We got, we got to give a shout out to Buster right. Sterling. Oh, 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 yep, yep. You just caught yourself. Ah. Oh, oh that was cool. A little transition. Yeah, I can do that too. But what I want to do. Well, he's got all the tricks in the bag right now. I haven't been behind the old wheel in a minute, but that's what I'm Oh, there he is. All right. Uh, he's coming back on. We'll talk about Portal. Talk about... Portal. Recruiting, talk about the draft, um, what he expects, talk about how great it is to see two of his guys playing Team right. USA. Um, there's a lot that we are going to hit on and touch on and looking forward to it. He always, I think he always has a good time on the show. We always have a good time with him. Yeah. How about Dylan well. Cruz taking over the five games they played in? Dude. I mean, just look like he always looks like the best player on the field. I didn't expect it to be this big a difference with the team he's good. stuff. If he doesn't go first, somebody's gonna lose their job. He's going first overall. I firmly believe he's gonna I wish he can run. I wish he would steal bags next year. But I don't think that's part of the game that Jay wants. Right. I know he can run, he can, yeah. he can do it. Yeah. But maybe he doesn't want to do it. I love stealing bases. I I I, I had a good time with it. I love that. I mean I still, <laughs> you stole what, thirty six one year? Uh, yeah, I think so. 30, so 30? Like, it's just fun. It's like, ultimate, uh, especially you go double, first pitch, steal third, like, ultimate, like, hey, That's there's good. nothing you can I'm, do. I'm, I got you. There's nothing you can do. Or hit a single, still second and third. Now, yeah. obviously, it's not all, like, when you get that SC play, it's a little harder to do, yeah. but. Back-to-back hmm. -back pitches. That's fun. That's fun. Hard, but, but fun. fun. Yeah. When you do it, it's like, God, yeah. nothing, there's really not much you can do. Not really much you can do, because I'm gonna get on base again, and I'm probably gonna try to do the same thing again. So good luck, good luck. They um. So wait, when when do they leave to go to? Uh, they, left they left today. They left today. So 
Dylan's dad was texting me. Yeah. Um, and he said he's in Paris right now. He's flying to Amsterdam. Oh, no. Tonight to go meet him. Right. So hopefully there's like some... five or six teams that are gonna be there too, right? Yeah, it's gonna be. They're playing Cuba, they're Italy, that, yeah. Canada, Japan, Japan. Japan. Then another one. Wait, is Canada? No. No, no. no. Curacao, I think it was. Yeah. Was Curacao another one? one. And uh, Croatia. Who said? We said Japan. <laughs> it's Croatia. I'm hoping you ever get that. <laughs> <laughs> Croatia. <laughs> when you called Curacao Croatia. Who did? I did. Oh, nice. A little self-deprecation. That was last week. That? You don't that remember that? Week. Oh, I, I just, think he was just so angry about football recruiting. I think so. See, what I think about that. when I hear Curacao, I always think of like the Lil Wayne song, The No Ceilings. I think about the Little League World Series. Yeah, that's what he talks about. Yeah, because they were so good. Yeah, they were dead. Didi Gregorius is from there. Andrew Jones. Andrew Jones from there. Speaking of Andrew Jones, his, his son's son probably going to go 1-1. One, one. His son's not from there. Is no, not but he's from very there. good. His son's Atlanta. supposed to go to Vandy. From Georgia. Yeah. Don't think he's going to Vandy. Don't think he's I don't think he's going to make it to college. Don't think he's going to Vandy. Not as a student. Um, let's. Where, where was yo? I heard y'all talking a little bit about uh, D. Cruz. Where was he projected out of high school to go in the draft? First round. Yeah. He was but projected, had, and then he had a, a. I won't say a bad summer, but he. I think he had. They call it down. It was a down summer, which look, it happened. I mean, he had some swing and miss. A guy, I, listen, at that point, especially at a high school, you're supposed to be for, like they're going to try to nitpick everything yeah. so that they don't have to pay you as much money as they yeah. want to. Um, Man, this was a shortened draft, and his dad was like, "Look, this is our number, and He's if you don't, if you don't hit, point. if you don't hit this number, like we don't need that money. We're going to go to school. Like yeah. we're just going to go. That we want to go to LSU. He'd rather go to LSU. If you're going to pay him what he's worth, we'll go. If not." We're going to go shoot, no hard feelings, take his name out the draft. And that's what happened. And now he's probably going to double his money. <laughs> pretty good pretty good ROI right there. Yeah. Do you, obviously, that's not something that's going to happen often. Like, that's not a new – like what Happened to Gosman, Happened to Bregman. Um, well, Bregman so, what, what's, what's not a new – What's not a new – it's yeah, he fell. Day. He fell, yeah. I was going to say, it's not going to be one of those things where people start kind of looking at college baseball. No, that's like, all. When, yeah, you see, yeah, no. when you see, I'm just going to say, because you saw what Wes Johnson did, and you see some of the money in college baseball, name, image, and likeness. There's, no, yeah. there's, there's, no. there's certain reasons why people fall through cracks, and there's different reasons. Just for him, right. that's what it was. For Bregman, it was like a hand or a thumb or some something Whatever crazy, happened, like yeah. right before the... Me, it always me. happened. Bregman I thought it, it was a hand thing coming out of high school. Yeah, I thought it was a hand thing coming out yeah, of high school. I would school. know before I would. Um, Just but, goofy stuff like that. Yeah. Money, Where, the money in college baseball for the player, obviously, is not competitive to what you're going to get in pro ball. Right. You know what I mean? Like, drafted or making to the big leagues to college, they can do it because you can pay – the school's paying their, their college coaches. But, um, yeah, it's just going to be – I mean, it's – I think you will get some guys to go to school, you know, like – Guys who really want to go and like that aren't, you know, high level first rounders or, you know, whatever. But I think they'll be more strict on their number. You know, there's a lot of guys that say, oh, this is my number and I'm not going for anything less than this. And it, <laughs> it come, push comes to shove and you get there and the team says, all right, this is our final offer. And it's all right. $300,000 less than what you want. He's like, okay, I guess I'll sign. Yeah, and I take it. You know, and like it's still a lot of money, but, you know, you, you came off your number. Like that's. So they say, like, if you pick a number, stick with a number, yeah. and that's what it is. And if they come to it, great. If not, then that's what you that's what you said yeah. that you valued it. You go to school, and if you're good enough, you are going to either get that number or more again, or you're going to develop, and you may not get you may get a little less, but you're going to get you may have a chance to get to the big leagues a little yeah. bit quicker than you would have because you develop physically and mentally. Uh huh. We shall see, but. I'll, I want to say I'm going to watch the draft. I'm not going to watch the draft. I'll probably peek in on a couple of a couple picks here and there. I mean, I'll see. I'll probably see. I want to see where Barry goes, and I want to see if Kate sneaks in there. Are you more interested? Are you more interested to see where maybe some of the high school kids, maybe, would, and some college transfers might go instead yeah. of LSU? I mean, there's definitely draft intrigue. No, for sure. It's just hard to watch the whole thing. Cause, it like, is so boring. The dra- I mean, look, there's not really any draft. I don't really even like watching the NFL draft. I mean, yeah. I do. I like watching. It's just too drawn out. Like, it takes too long to I get don't really like seeing I actually like watching just to – let me just see the ticker. Who's yeah. going? Where are they at? The ticker, exactly. That's pretty much it. 
Exactly. And then I don't need to see the analysis of why he yeah. went there. How many like, times do you miss the ticker when you're like, oh, all the trying time. to see the same thing? All the thing. time. And, uh, yeah, it's Literally gone. all the time. Gone. Yeah. All the time. Gone. I mean, you could be like Nikola Jokic and, and be on a Taco Bell commercial. They were. He was just a cheesy gordita crunch. He was a cheesy gordita him. crunch and he got drafted the second round. Did what? you not see that? Back to back MVP. No, I when Nikola Jokic got drafted, he was the second rounder. Yeah, I knew so that. So they didn't really televise it. So their picks were coming in when they were on commercial. So it was coming through the ticker, and the commercial was a cheesy gordita crunch from Taco Bell, and it said drafted second round, Nikola Jokic. That's the first time they like put it up there. <laughs> yeah, well. Taco Bell commercial, cheesy gordita crunch, well. and a two time two two time MVP, back, back to back. back, back to back. Now you got Nikola Jo Jovic. Yeah. First round pick. Not Jokic, a, yeah. Jokic and a Jovic. Too Jokic. bad Zion's better. Oh, speaking of, happy birthday to Zion. What a great happy, day what for a, him. What a birthday today? present. Yeah. Today? yeah. You think he you think he uh is gonna do something fun for his birthday? In he signed a Supermax? Five years? Uh, two hundred and how many million? Lots of them. Two hundred million. Two hundred a lot of millions. <laughs> Lots of them. A lot of millions. And it's got some uh, Boy, this, the Pelicans are going to be good, man. Like I'm excited. I really am excited about it. They are going to be really good. I tell you what, you know, it's hard to imagine that that coach not somewhat being on a somewhat of a hot seat, in a sense of like, and and I'm not saying it's got to be from the start. I'm just saying in a sense of like you saw what. The well, here's the deal. Look, we've we've been hyped up. The Pelicans have been hyped up before, and we've gotten excited about the Pelicans before, and then they started off the next season, god awful. That's why I said I'm not saying it has hoping, to be from the start. I'm just right. saying, like, I, I know how it goes. Like, if we can sit here and acknowledge, like, how good and how deep that, that the roster is, if it doesn't perform and you get to deep in the year and it's not there. No doubt. Just they, how, they have that's to just the, how the business goes. They, 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 if they don't make the playoffs and they don't have a winning record next year, like, that's an I mean, that's a, that's not I'd say First off, you don't even have to have a winning record to make the playoffs. I know, too, but they so. should have one. Yeah, no, I agree. That's just, but that's the point, yeah. I would expect, like, expectation for me with the Pelicans should be the top half of their division. Wait, wait, wait the top West. half of the division? Of, like, the top, like, there's, what, eight teams that make the playoffs? Eight teams that make the playoffs. So I would say, like, four or five. Four plus. Like, four, four, nothing five lower plus. than five. Right. Like, get out of the play-in well, tournament. Well, yeah, don't. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess you could. Technically, I could see them getting you know to a I mean? four or five spot. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying five. Like five would be like to me. Like that would be the expectation based off of the yeah. talent you have, based off what you did last year. You know, you have your best. You, you have one of your best. added a first get, overall pick. Well, exactly. I think no it's. Point. I think it's fair to say it'd be it's an healthy. underwhelming season if they're in the playoff again. I mean, a play in game. No doubt, play they, situation again. They shouldn't have to be in the play in games, and I don't think they should be a seven seed. I think it should yeah. be. I mean, like, you could realistically see them behind the Warriors, Suns, Suns. and Jazz as the. Oh well, no, seed. Jazz are gonna stink. They're trading all their. Assets. Oh, that's true. That's true. So maybe the three. I mean, well, you, I mean, you have to. You, have to, assume, you have to assume the Lakers are gonna probably be in play. I know they yeah. stunk this year, but like. You can't, you can't, you can't expect, you can't imagine them having a bad just, year. Yeah, yeah, but they're not, but they'll just, be between three and they're going to go with KD. But, what, but, the, but the thing, is, but the thing but, is, let's be completely or Kyrie, honest. Or Kyrie, one of those two are going there. Yeah, and but we I don't, don't think they're going to be better than the Pelicans. Bro, if, if, I know, if, I'm not saying they will, but maybe, I mean, like, they're going to be LeBron's good enough to compete healthy, in that. Sp- and you know. AD's healthy and they get a third, it's hard to imagine they're not somewhere in there. Right. Like, you're not going to not, they're not going to be what they want to That's not going to happen. Like, in terms of seeding, how many games do. LeBron and AD and well, that's the thing. Do they stay together. healthy? Less, they've they've well, never no, been healthy. Though, even yeah. even if they're healthy, how much like how well, much? Russell's there I think, too. Russell ain't going anywhere. Yeah, he opted in for so I much money. Rest more. Yeah, I didn't opt in. He's an idiot. Man, I guess it's forty-seven point five million dollars. I guess I'll I guess I'll sign. I guess I'll opt in for another year for forty-seven. Coming back, guys. I'll try it again. <laughs> but we don't want you to. I know, but I'm. So, I got to. Two K releasing means like a 72 overall in this year's game. Ben Way Simmons down. is a better three point shooter in the game than Russell Westbrook. Really? Is. Yeah. yeah, that's tough. Damn. Kyrie. I mean, listen. I don't, how, I don't know how. Right really, <laughs> I don't know Russ, how. Kyrie. Damn. Ben Simmons took zero three pointers. That hurts right here. You took can you two imagine many three pointers? That's the well, one. I don't know how the Lakers can afford Kyrie with the cap or they, uh, or Dre. I saw. I saw. I know today it's not Trey, but like. Well, I saw today Russell. they would they would dump. It was like a three. Three team trade between them, the Spurs, and the Nets. They would basically just dump Westbrook to the Spurs. Nets give Kyrie to the Lakers, and then the Spurs give picks to the Nets. Mm. So basically, it's they like, can make it work. Can you imagine yeah, can if KD went there and it'd be KD and Westbrook again? Be but so I think funny. it'd be the same thing. You have to get rid of Westbrook. Sign no, and trade. KD's leaving. He's already he's the one that wants. Oh, out. did he? I don't know, but they have to trade he, him, right? Then he asked for a trade, yeah. so they yeah. have to trade him. So like, he still has a cap. I mean, he still have, have to get to. rid of the cap. 
I mean, if they do, yeah. if they do, he still has a cap number. Like they can't afford that number of, with the guys they already have. So have to get rid of some guys. Oh, absolutely. So I'm saying, so it'd be the same yeah. thing. Like you'd have to get them and get rid of probably Westbrook and getting rid of KD. Okay. I mean, you ain't getting rid of AD and you ain't getting rid of LeBron. No. So. Or, no. Would you say? Oh, is Jay in there? Yeah, he is. He's drinking orange juice. Perfect. I just saw it. All right, thirty second. He thirty second. Say, yes. Yeah. What do you do? Gotta laugh. Thirty second. Thirty <laughs> second break. You're watching Mike Dub brought to you by Sterling Automotive. I thought you were doing. Shake it up, they're fine. Like I'm not worried about that. But what he did do is he allowed Pearson, Josh Pearson, who's a freshman, he gave him a couple starts and he took advantage. He had two homers on Sunday. He had some big hits on Saturday, and we have. Two I got you. Guys, Can you hear me? Stevenson and Pearson, who I think are going to be very, very, very good in the outfield. And now they're starting to kind of force their way into the lineup. And Pearson obviously doesn't seem like he's going to be taken out of the lineup anytime soon, based on. Based off of what they did, <laughs> what happened? There's some, there's some, there's some background noise there's going some, on. Something happened. There's some background. <laughs> Welcome back to Mike Up. We're brought to you by Sterling Automotive. Um, our friend, friend of the show, Lloyd's best friend, Coach Jay Johnson, back on the show after a, I guess, a month and a half hiatus. I don't know how long it's been since the season ended, and and. Uh, you've been on the recruiting show, hitting it hard, and the portal hitting it hard. I'm still in doing the portal. A, yeah. Well, is, yeah. I don't know how the portal well, does. The portal ever close? Is like a mythical thing that somehow you you figured it out. But we'll time talk time. about it. Coach, thanks for coming back on. Good to be on with you guys. How you doing tonight? Doing well. Doing well. So um, you say you just got back in town. I'm, I'm presuming from recruiting, right? Presume. I'm assuming. Actually, no. Uh, still trying to find that. Uh, Top recruiting coordinator in college baseball. Uh, so that's, that's actually, technically that's recruiting, right? It's recruiting in a different window. It's we okay. knew it wasn't vacation. Yeah, it was not vacation. <laughs> that's for sure. It was uh, fly out, fly out, and back in the same day. And um, yeah, so had a productive day and moving along on that search. So it's good. Nice, Coach. Last time we talked, you're getting ready to play in a regional. Um, we talked to you at the selection show. We talked about the expectations and everything that we, we had going on. Obviously, the, the boys, you know, came up a little short, which is, you know, disappointing you, disappointing them. And I think everybody would admit that, like, this is they, that, that's not what they anticipated and what they expected. And then from that point forward, you've been out and you've been making the moves. You've been making – you've been bringing guys in. Guys have moved out, transferred – moved on, transferred out, have gone different places. How has this last month been – for you, as, as far as changing the roster and adapting the roster to the guys that you want and, and how hard are those conversations having, having with those players that are leaving? Yeah, um, man, you packed a lot in. I know, I know, I know. Right there. Um, you know, I, going back to the end of the season, I, I'm really proud of our team this year. I mean, we won 40 games. Um, I believe that was two more than they won uh, in the previous season. You know, we jumped from ninth place where they were in 2021 to fourth in the SEC. Uh, did a lot of things. A lot of players had great individual seasons, a couple All-Americans. All and most importantly, set a good foundation for competing and, and winning going forward. I mean, there's nobody that wants to win a national title more than me. And that's what I came to LSU to do. And that's what all the work since then has been push towards but i'm proud of our team in 2022 um you know we overcame some some shortcomings overcame uh, a lot of injuries and uh had a lot of success you know we ultimately didn't get to omaha um but uh, other than that it was it was a good first year so I'm, I'm proud of those guys for that then moving forward yeah i mean i think uh you're always evaluating your program it's not like you know, I wake up one day and say, this guy stays or this guy goes or any of that. I'm always evaluating what's best for LSU baseball. And I'm evaluating what's best for the players themselves. And, you know, we have competitive guys in our program that, that want to play. And um, so several of them made their own decision, frankly, to, to move on. And uh, I respect them for that. And uh, 
you know, those aren't really tough conversations for me because I'm just, I'm a straightforward guy and I'm, I'm really honest. I try to listen and evaluate what the player wants and give them my honest feedback for where they're at. And then um, try to always make the best decision, you know, for them. And so that's really what that phase was. And then, you know, the other part of that group is the guys that are going to be returning and, you know, really earmarking the things that we want them to do in summer ball or in the weight room to improve so that it's the same name on the roster next year, but it's a better player yeah. and being really intentional about what we do with those guys. And I actually said to this team somewhere in the middle of the year and just talking about moving forward in 2023, that the roster would look like this. It would be the best players and best people from this team. Those would be the guys that would return. Uh, we had a good foundation, you know, with our high school class that was the number one class uh, in the country by perfect game. You know, a lot of those guys, not a lot, maybe a lot, some of those guys are going to sign pro contracts, but some of them are going to show up. And then when you put those two groups together, then I was just going to evaluate what we needed uh, from the transfer portal. And then we were going to get those guys, and that's what the 2023 roster was going to look like. And so that's what I've done for the last, you know, three weeks. And feel good about where we're at. Now it's just about the draft and evaluating where we are after that and, and go from there. Yeah, that's what I was going to get to next. The draft comes up in, I think, nine days. I think it's July 15th. Um, you talked about the recruiting class coming in, how many guys that you all have, the number one recruiting class in the country. Obviously, not all those guys are going to be on campus. Um, and you have some guys on the team that have an opportunity to get drafted or come back. And even, honestly, some guys that you got in the portal that are draft eligible that – that could also go. How do you navigate that? Do, have you had these conversations with these guys of like, hey, you know what? How what are they telling you? How's the draft looking? Like, are you con in constant con conversation with them, or is it? Oh, I gotta have this kind of like a, a gambling, like wait and see and see what happens. Oh no, it's on my radar every day. <laughs> I, I literally, I mean, if you this is my home office right here. Right. There's paper everywhere, and it's literally the same thing. It's the spots on the roster, scholarship, who I project is in, who I project is out. And it's it's a it's a constant like reworking of, of everything to make sure we have what we need to be successful, but we have it within uh, what the NCAA rules and guidelines say. And it's tough in baseball. You know, a lot of times I wish we were like football where when you recruit a player, you definitely get them and they're showing up. And then there was no, no draft. Um, but we don't have it that way. So you got to be creative. And, you know, I think for me, um, keeping us in a position of power is really important. And so, um, you know, we try to project, we try to have conversations. I mean, we got guys in summer school right now. We have eight players in summer school and there's probably four of those guys that are going to have to, you know, answer the phone and say yes or no, whether they're going to stay here or they're going to pack up their dorm room and head to Peoria, Arizona, or, St. Pete, Florida, and, and figure out, you know, where they're going in professional baseball. What I've done is just try to educate them of, you know, the draft will tell you what your value is to professional baseball. You know, I have very strong thoughts on this. If you're a first-round pick, so if you're the first player selected by a team and you're the face of that draft, then it's, it's understandable to sign because they're going to make sure that you make it to the big leagues. You have a 75% chance of being a major leaguer. When that first round ends, I don't care what the money says. Your odds of making it go down dramatically. And, you know, I'm very partial to what we do here at LSU. I'm very partial to college baseball. It's just a better way to develop. And, um, you know, we'll always provide that for our players that choose college. Uh, the thing that changes that sometimes for families is money. And professional baseball has a lot of that to give out right now. So, um yeah, I mean, this transfer portal thing's been good because it's given us an avenue that we haven't really had before to cover up some of those losses. And so, um, yeah, it's going to kind of be yeah. hold on to your hat. I'm That's probably going to lock myself in a hotel room <laughs> with like three three phones and – and uh, for three days, you might not yeah. hear from me during and, those three hey, days. You know, that, that, was well, honestly, well, that was honestly what I wanted to ask you. I wanted to what, – which, which draft day like for you? You know, I, I would imagine being a fan – for your own situation is, you know, pretty high up on the, on the priority list, like it should be. And obviously doing this, doing, you know, doing the players that are going to have that decision, the, the best you can do to give them the right information to make the best decision possible for them. 
But how was that day for you? Is there a couple different shirt changes? Meaning like, I'm sure you might sweat through one. And like, <laughs> how does it go? Like, how, how's it work for you? Yeah, well, this year uh, specifically, I'm actually going to be out in, in Arizona. I'm going to be with uh, Jacob Berry and his family. Oh, nice. uh, they invited me and, and my wife to be out there. And Great. I'm super proud of him. And we obviously have a special relationship and special connection of, you know, six years between recruiting and coaching them. And then two different schools, right. you know, I mean, um, you're seeing it all over now. The, you know, the Michigan guys are going to Clemson and uh, the Notre Dame guys are going to Florida State. So, like, we were kind of the first ones bloody through the door where right. those guys went in the portal and I recruited them to LSU and everybody thought I was crazy and, you know, right. but that's just how it's going to go. I mean, uh, the quarterback from Oklahoma is now at SC. Yep. And, um, you know, players a lot of times will follow the relationship, you know, and it might be hard for some to understand that in recruiting it's a lot about relationships. So um, that's, you know, where I'm at with Jacob and, and his family. So I'm going to go there. I'm certainly hoping he's picked quickly. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll hug, smile, take pictures. And then, uh, I'm probably going to dart out the door to a, <laughs> a hotel and set yeah. up shop and, no and make sure I'm talking to, uh, talking to our players that need to be talked to and talked through the situation. And, and for me, it shouldn't even have to be like that. I think, you know, you know, the pro baseball teams, they, they play on the emotion of these players, yeah, right. you know, and yeah. that, that draft can get really emotional and, and guys will come down and lower their numbers. And for me, we're just trying to give them a plan and get them to stick to their plan. And right. if they do that, then pro baseball tells you you're worth in pro baseball. Yep, right. and, That's the hardest and thing to do. Players, yeah. Yes. And uh, I get it. I mean, who doesn't want to play on TV and, and the power of that and, uh, but you're not going to the TV right away. Right. You're going it may be exactly. four or five you're years to get to, there. Exactly. Yeah, you're going, like I said, to Goodyear, Arizona, Clearwater, Florida. Um, and so it's just, it's an interesting time. It's uh, it's going to be intense and, you know, we'll have to figure some things out, you know, on, on both sides of it. And um, that's just the way that it is. And, um, you know, for me, my job is to protect our program. And uh, that's that's what I feel like we've done in recruiting and, you know, I'm excited to see how it plays out. But then there's another side of it where it's almost hard to project 2024 till we get the following year right. until we get until we get through this day. Right. So um, I'm anxious. I wish it was tomorrow. I'll be honest with you, but uh, I'm certainly uh, certainly happy for our players from our team this past year that are going to get selected. And um, you know, with the recruits, we'll we'll see how it falls. I think the players would rather it be. Uh, today or tomorrow too because I, I know going through it it was stressful for me and it was a very high anxiety for me too talks about relationships and how important that is in recruiting it's also important in trying to get your staff together right and I think the big splash hire and the the, the pitching coach Wes Johnson I mean yeah Wes Johnson bringing him in from Minnesota you know I don't think anybody saw that coming I know I didn't I know Jared didn't I know a lot of people around Major League Baseball probably didn't I don't know how much you can go into detail about this because I know, you know, but how did that come about? Like, obviously, his reputation in college baseball as a pitching coach, that precedes him, right? You, everybody knows that. But how do you say, you know what, I'm going to go and offer a big league guy on a first-place team in the Major League Baseball, <laughs> a college baseball pitching coach job, same job, and then him take it? Yeah, you know what's funny is everybody keeps asking me about this, and it's just like, hey man, I, I'm LSU. Like this is the big leagues to that. me. Like I, I, I don't, I don't really care about all this other stuff. Yeah. Um, I wanted to get the best player or the best coach, so our current pitchers could improve as much as they could. I want to get the best coach, so that the best pitchers want to not only commit and sign to LSU, they want to bypass the draft and make sure they come to LSU. And there's nobody better than Wes. I mean, for my money, he's the best pitching coach in all of baseball at any level. And he has this unique skill set or experience of, I mean, the guys at Mississippi State, uh, I coached against him in the 2016 Super Regional. He was at Arkansas in 17 and 18, and we actually played Arkansas in both 17 and 18. So I've competed against him. So he knows the highest level of Division One baseball. He knows the SEC West. And then he's been in the big leagues for three right. and a half years right. on playoff type teams and has coached the type of guys that our pitchers are going to want to be. I mean, the Chris Archers of the world will swear by Wes Johnson and that's just the, the start of it. And so 
I think it's as good a hire as we could have. Um, and the, just working together so far, which has been on the phone totally, uh, has been really exciting to hear him call a few guys of our returning pitchers or recruits and then get off the phone and call me and break down what he has. It's just in the yeah. motor, the information, right. it's it's next level. And everybody's going to be really excited that he's here, we especially actually talk, as he gets to work. We actually talked about the Chris Archer thing. So I play with Arch in, in Tampa, so I, I know him pretty well. And when he was in Tampa, obviously he was a he was a he was an all star. He was elite. And then over his last few years, he kind of suffered. And then you watch him this year, and you're like, well, this is the old Chris Archer. And to see what Wes has done to him, like that's evident. Obviously, his, his college his college resume is great, but then see him being able to get a high level professional pitcher who has had success buy into what he's saying, like that says a lot about his personality, his character, and how good of a coach. He actually is so like we're, I'm super pumped to watch him in college here at LSU and, and develop the guys. Did y'all have a relationship beforehand outside of playing against each other? Like, did you know him personally, or is it just kind of mutual friends and yeah. just kind of hooked up that way? Yeah, I think um, you know when he was at Dallas Baptist. I mean, Coach Fitzgerald, who just left, and I have been friends for a long time, and and Wes was on the staff with him, and so you kind of heard about this guy. Like, there was just this a way ahead of his time as far as developing guys. And then he went to Mississippi State, and um, we obviously, you know, won that Super Regional, but the first game was 1-0, you know what I mean? And then the second game was 5-4. to four, and So you couldn't help but be impressed. And then the next year we were playing Arkansas, and, I mean, Matt Cronin's left-handed throwing 99 out of the pen, and it's just like, man, I don't know where they get these arms, but this dude is turning these guys into monsters, right. you know? Um and so that really caught my attention. But then the root of how we got him this year is he was my choice last year. Like I was trying to get him last year. And so um, there were some things, you know, with the twins and, you know, getting uh, it's not service time or the right pension. Yep. There was a, 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 a yearly mark for him to, to hit, which that was totally understandable. And then, you know, the thought was maybe he was going to get an extension or multi-year contract out of the, the twins and then you know i uh i thought that was the case but when i uh, went back you know he was he was a lot more available than i thought and and you guys know i mean that's a tough lifestyle especially yeah, if you have like a, a a family so i know he's super excited to get his family all under one roof and here and right in baton rouge and and uh, i think it's going to be great for them it's going to be great for us and our pitchers and lsu and the fans it's just it's an awesome deal for our program. And, I mean, I would have to imagine now, obviously you were a, a the huge, in, like huge part of <clears throat> getting him signed and getting him here. But I would have to imagine that being able to bring him back to college ball, someone who's coached in college ball, someone who's coached in the SEC is now doing at the highest level of the sport. I would imagine that bringing him back here, if you hadn't felt it before in any other player situation and or coach situation, as far as for recruiting and getting guys here and the power of being here at this place has to be like, oh, wow, this is all right. This is crazy that we're able to, to be able to do these type of moves and, and things go through for you. Yeah, 100 percent. And uh, I had three really good candidates like for this job. Like it was awesome. Like and any one of the three would have been outstanding for our players. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was this was a big deal. And when you talk about that, Jared, putting the LSU name with the direction of our program, with the history of the program, with what all of you guys did. And then these players today, they want development. Like right. they want to be major leaguers. And now you have this pitching coach with the intelligence, the work ethic, the energy, the motor, the experience, the skill set from every phase of this thing to, you know, developing velocity, developing secondary pitches, creating deception um calling pitches you know developing throwing programs synergy with the strength coach i mean this dude is complete uh, i mean really really complete and uh it's super exciting if you're a, a pitcher on our staff or a future pitcher that this is who you're going to be working with i certainly hope it helps me not go out to the mound as many times during the game <laughs> i wish i had so, some eligible i wish he's I had big some, for the pace huh i wish i had some eligibility left i'd maybe go i'll try to get on the bump now you got me fired up Let's go. I, I wish. I wish. If, uh, oh, he offers you immediately. If Never I could have had you that. 
Hey, you know, all of you guys might have been useful in, at the game three and four of our rematch. <laughs> yeah. sure, so. That's a very good point. <laughs> Coach, I do have one more question about Wes Johnson, how you're able to bring him in, because obviously – we see all the benefits of why you wanted to hire him, but what were you able to sell him on at LSU? And obviously I know that you like to say, well, this is LSU, this is a place that you want to be, but this man had a pretty cush job at tennis, at uh, working for the Twins. But I'm wondering, what was your actual like sales pitch and what kind of, how long did that conversation take? Were you doing a lot of convincing or was he like, oh, I'm back, I'm all in? No, I, I think there was three things. Um, number one, I think it was, you know, getting to know each other a little better. Like, you know, can we work together? And um, that we checked that box pretty quickly. Um, number two, you know, I mentioned his family, kind of getting them all under the same roof. And then we kind of have a, a similar history where we both were about as close to winning a national title without winning one as you possibly can be. I mean, my team in 16 left the tying run on third and the winning run in the bottom of the ninth inning on second to lose a national championship game. His team dropped a pop-up in the yeah. ninth inning two yeah. years oh. later uh, that would have won the national championship game. So we kind of talked about that. And and you guys know this as competitors, like those things leave a hole in you. You know what yeah. I mean? Like for me, it's it's not about anything else. Like I want to win a national title. I want to – I don't know that anybody will get this to the level that Coach Bertman had it in the 90s, but I'm sure as hell going to try. Yeah. And, you know, to do that, like – you got to have the right pieces in place and you got to be deliberate about how you put the organization together. And, and this is a really big piece for that. And when I say to all this, like I have tremendous respect for the job that coach Kelly did this year. He did an outstanding job. I don't know that anybody could have done better with this staff than he did for, to get us to have be fourth in the conference in ERA uh, with where we were at is a tremendous accomplishment. I'm super happy for him and, this is one of those deals where I feel like everybody won and was successful with how all this, this happened. Right. So You mentioned a lot of what I wanted to hit on a little bit because I think anybody that watched the, the press conference after the, the final game in the Super Regional saw how almost that just oh, – you were wearing it on your face a little bit of how much you wanted to win and how almost surprised you were that we didn't advance to a Super Regional. And then once you get to Super Regional at home, you get to Omaha, anything can happen. How much of that loss kind of spurned these changes a little bit to where you're like – all right, I proved myself a little bit in year one at LSU that I can absolutely handle this job. And then to go on and be like, I'm going to do it absolutely the way I want to do it. I'm going to do it the Jay Johnson way. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's that's stuff for you guys to talk about. I know that losing is really painful for me. Like, yeah. I'm, I don't need more. I don't need more motivation. Like, I mean, I came here with plenty of it, and um, you know. I just, I wanted it for this team. Like I wanted to take that team to Omaha because other than the guys I've brought, none of these guys have played in Omaha. You know what I mean? Like they, they don't know what that's like. And it is the pinnacle of college baseball. You guys know that, you know, you played there and what that means and, and what that is. So I think I was just, I mean, I was disappointed for that. And, and we weren't, we weren't making any changes on the staff. I mean, I'm proud of those guys for getting power five head coaching jobs and um, feel like, they're well prepared to be successful with coach Kelly at Washington and coach Fitzgerald at Kansas. But for me, it's just, you know, you have to make decisions to push the program to, to its best level. And, you know, I didn't ask to be a yeah. staffless yeah. this, this, this <laughs> right. summer, yeah, it made but, your job uh, a little harder. but we're, yeah, but we're making, we're more than making the best of it. That's for sure. Coach, yeah. I appreciate you taking this time. I'm going to have just one or two more questions to be really quick. Um, one, how excited are you to watch, Two of your guys, Dylan Cruz and Trey Morgan, play for Team USA. Um, you know, putting on the pur put red, white, and blue and the USA on your chest. It's a pretty huge honor and to be able to watch them go out there and compete and, and represent not only themselves but LSU. How how happy or excited yeah, are you for them? Yeah. Yeah, it's a big deal and it's awesome. I actually I went to their game last Friday um uh, in Durham and Dylan hit a home run. Yeah. Uh Trey hit a double double the other way. I mean, they're representing us really, really well. I mean I just kind of scanned the field and it's like, obviously, I mean, Dylan made the team last year, but it's like, these dudes are not only going to make the team, they're going to be the catalyst, you know, for, for that right. team. And yeah. I'm super, super proud of them. And, and I think it's a great honor. I mean, it's so hard. You're talking about 26 players in the entire country get to do that. Yeah. And so uh, I think they, they're great players are talented. I think they both really improved as the season went along this year and, you know, they're well positioned to help them win. And then, 
um, really excited, obviously, to get to coach him again next year. Um, last question. Go back to the draft. I'll let you go after this. Um, you talked about going to Arizona, being with uh, Jacob Berry, watching the draft, kind of being nervous. What is your – who do you think – I guess – I guess that's putting you on the spot, but out of all the guys, recruits and guys that you have coached, how many guys do you realistically think will not or will will take the money and, and go after the first round? Do you think that you're going to lose half your recruiting class in the first round? That's a tough one. Oh, uh, well, I'm looking to the, my right. <laughs> my seven, seven, 17 list here. Um, I think it's fair to say I think five – Five are gone for sure. Okay. Like, it's just, it is what it is, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, probably six. And then there's a list of five other guys where it could legitimately go either way. Okay. Um, but that's why, you know, when you add, uh, you know, Tommy White, Carter Young, um, Jack Pineda, like, everybody's like, uh, man, what are, you, what are you doing? Like, yeah. it's like, well, every, every backup infielder – Win in the transfer portal right. from LSU, right? And right. then uh, I look, I look at all these projections, and Tucker Toman and Mikey Romero and Gavin Gidry are all stuffed up there, pretty good. <laughs> right. So I mean, I don't think it's really fair to ask uh, Jordan and Trey to just each cover one side of the infield and have no other infielders <laughs> right. on your roster. So, uh, no so you know what? I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, you know, when I look at. Tucker Toman swing the bat. It looks like Corey Seager to me. So it's like, I, I get it. Like, yeah. I mean, I saw him, I saw him swing in January and I was like, we got a problem. Like this <laughs> right. ain't, this is not, not this is not happening. Yeah. yeah, this is not <laughs> happening. And then, I mean, everybody knows how good Mikey is and intangibles and, and all those things. And there's just, you hear too much about, about that. So you kind of have to have to project. And you know what, if, if we get a surprise in there, I think Gavin Guidry, um, I think he's the one to talk about because, I mean, he's from Louisiana, loves LSU. I mean, he's a super competitor. I mean, he's the exact kind of guy I want to build this program around. And, you know, we had a conversation the last couple of days. He's here for summer school like, hey, man, the phone's going to ring. And <laughs> yeah. somebody's going to have – somebody's going to say, you know, $1.8 million. And you're going to say no. <laughs> right. And that's going to be very hard to do. I need that's you to very, understand yeah. this, this has to happen. Oh, yeah. Just say, hey, so, look what Dylan Cruz so, is. He's doubled his money from college, from high school to college. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, it, you know what? Money is money. But, I mean, there's a whole element of this thing about being ready for professional no baseball. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. look how good a player's – look at – Lloyd, <laughs> you know what, Lloyd? <laughs> I mean, you're looking for a recruiting coordinator, but, coach. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know that you're gonna pass the first round of uh, RMA. <laughs> oh, what kind of drugs are we testing? <laughs> oh my god. So, oh man. But yeah, there, there's this whole element of being prepared for professional baseball. It's one thing to get a signing bonus. It's a whole another thing to go out and and it kick butt and and, no and really get after that thing and there's no there's no doubt that you're going to be more prepared after playing in our program and at lsu and in the sec than going out of high school for sure um coach i appreciate it like always thank you for for giving us i mean 30 minutes of your time your interviews are always fun excuse lloyd i'm glad he can still make you laugh just ignore him if you have to um hopefully we get you back on after the draft or a little later on the summer before the season of school before the school's Season. Oh, so I guess it's a school year. season. Yeah. School year starts. Um, but again, thank you so much. I know you're busy. Thank you for your time. And uh, I'll talk again soon. You got it, guys. All Have right. a good night. Thanks, Coach. Right, Coach love you. You. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Love you. Oh, man. You help, dude. I love that he gives us so much time. It has to be like a break for him. He doesn't. Know? He doesn't really bullshit the answers either. Like mm -hmm. he kind of gives it straight up. I, 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 was, like trying, I was trying here. to ask him the, that first that question with like the recruits and like that's a hard one to ask. I, but I didn't know he's gonna name drop everybody. Yeah, me either. That was an open call. I think those are the ones. The that, I think, I think those are the ones. Recruiting, recruiting pitch. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I think those oh, are the ones oh, he I'm sees though. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting a tweet. Yeah, yeah, you're getting tagged you're getting on. Twitter. Retweeted. You're getting commented <laughs> yeah. on. Like that is. Uh, those that, that those was, are the ones he sees. He's like, look, these. I'm just like these. We know. These yeah. Are, these are the media tough names. No, that one's getting. That one's getting clipped tonight and posted. I mean, morning. Thatcher. He even mentioned Thatcher. Thatcher. Oh, he's talking about infielders, but Thatcher Hurt has a potential to be top five pick in 2024. 
Yeah. From UCLA. Did we do a good job of asking about all of the recruits? We didn't ask about any of them. Yeah. We really we did yeah, a great I mean, job. No, but there wasn't like we didn't single them out. We didn't. I mean, there's yeah. we didn't have enough time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I really wanted to talk. The West Johnson. I think it's the biggest. Was news, the yeah. biggest thing I wanted to ask him about, and like, I mean, so, he was, hey, that was actually interesting to know though. Like, so West was on the he was on the radar the year before. Yeah. So there well, you go. What did I say before about yeah. the pensions? Yeah. I told you there's yeah. an issue. There's reasons why they stay there, and then they didn't offer him an extension. So he said, it made it easy right, for him. Yeah. I'm out boys. Yeah. Like you're not going to give me a guarantee to be here after everything that we've done, everything, yeah. everything I've done. Like I'm out. Yeah. He's I'm out. I'm too. out. I'm going like, before I'm gonna go you get rid of me, five million, a five year deal. Before you get rid of me, I'm going to go get some security somewhere. No doubt. Um, and that's kind of been the issue with professional baseballs that, you know, was telling us about. And like, it's just, you know, Good for Jay for going out and getting it. He ass. named, you know, probably what did he say, five or six guys that he feels like won't come back. Do you think that means that he is not done in the portal? Because he's yeah, gonna, I think it depends on who. I think it depends on who. I think I think he wants more infield depth. I think so he's, I think it just I think he's on. like quiet period until the draft. See yeah. what happens then. Yeah. When does the is there a this I don't is know. An, uh, me okay? That was a Jay question. I didn't ask him that. When the portal know. ends? Yeah, as I said, I don't know when it closes or Wait, opens. They and, have. Two of them are on Team USA with Cruz and Morgan that they're targeting. The Southern Miss arm sure. and then Southern the Air Miss Force kid. Yeah, yeah both arms, though. Yeah. Well, Skeens is a two-way. The Air Force kid okay. is a two-way guy. Oh, the Skeens gland. Um, so they're both on the team with Cruz and Morgan, which a recruiting pitch by itself. He gets, they both get to be around those two guys. <clears throat> right. But yeah. also because they're going to be you know, away playing, I don't, I don't think you're going to hear anything about either one of those guys until after the draft. Yeah. Just the timing yeah. of it. I mean, the draft, look, the drafts, they're going to, I mean, these guys are going to get drafted and they're going to be in Amsterdam. Yeah. He's worried about me. Well, I guess no, they're not, they're not draft eligible. eligible. They're not draft eligible. They are going to probably make their decision after the draft, which is happening while they're in Amsterdam. Right. Let me rephrase that. Like, the guys, which is crazy because, like, think about this. Think about this. The draft used to be. Middle of the postseason. Yeah, like, yeah. like yeah, you could go they, play like, the you, World like you, would, you used yeah, to get drafted well, like, in you Omaha, and Omaha. you'd have to you no, like, right before. I mean, right, and those super, like the then, supers. Yeah, like you yeah. would clinch yourself to Omaha and then watch the draft. Yeah. I there's no, no we didn't make the postseason my, the year I got drafted. That was he got drafted in the first we, round. Yeah. It literally it for me it happened. We clinched the supers, so it was the week after. So we're sitting here, like, literally practicing for, like, we had to cut. All of the phones are lined up yeah, in the we, dugout. No, no well, because guys were going to get calls before, but, like, we cut the practice short knowing that, hey, there's probably five or six guys that's going to be getting really early calls. So, like, dudes were, like, hurrying up the shower, like, and then literally ran home to be like, hey, well, let me see what's on the TV. Like, what's going on? Like, crazy. And then yeah. you have the second. Like, you, like, I, I know guys that didn't shower because they were like, well, I don't want to miss a call. How, right. Yeah, I was going to say, how much did you get done at that practice that day? Like, I'm sure you're just No, practice, but, but practice was like whatever. But it you was know, an you, escape. No, honestly. yeah, like, we literally, we did it because it was like we had to do it, but it was like no one cared. About, and Coach right. knew that. Like, no one cared about practice. Here you are. You just finished. We just finished beating Rice. We already knew where we were going. It's like the Monday, Tuesday. Well, I don't remember what day, what day it was, but like everyone's like, "Bro, we're here because we got to take some swings." But like, we know what today yeah. is. Yeah. Like, we're, oh, well, we then you had the, then you had the second day of the draft and the third because that that year was fifty yeah. rounds. Yeah. So you have now obviously the tours are later, but the second you still had the you would have phones lined up in the dugout, and coach yeah. had one manager. Matt Montgomery answering them all <laughs> was there and he was answering all the phones Dude, the old and he switcher. was in charge of <laughs> he was in charge of getting coach to call in whoever got whoever's phone rang yeah it's crazy now yeah. I didn't make the postseason my, my draft year so I was at home I was able to be like I think I rather would have been playing because I was so nervous like you just rather have to get your mind to take your mind off of grandma it grandma was making fun of you grandma, grandma made some jokes it was very funny though very the, perfect great, timing it would be wait, it would be cool to see so separately she didn't Time mean to, to break do that. the ice. I was not. She was not intentional. It was. It ended up being great, but it was not intentional. <laughs> she did not make the comment on purpose to where it'd be funny. She didn't know it. She just did it. it. Just happened. But yeah, I mean, it's in high school. I remember in high school, I had to have my phone in the. We had to play a tour. We were playing a baseball tournament up in Monroe. What kind of phone? It was a flip phone, like a little. I don't remember what kind of flip phone it was, but. We had the phone in the dugout. I had to have it in my bag, and I just kept checking it. And like, cause I was, I wasn't anticipating getting drafted initially, and then I was getting all this talk about getting drafted in like the second or third round. I was like, there's no way, but like maybe. 
So then I was then that passed by. And I was like, hey, maybe, and then nothing. And then I'm in the room in between games. I'm sleeping, and my phone rings. And it's like the 38th rounds, the Marlins, 39th rounds, the Marlins. Hey, you know, we really liked you. We know you're not going to sign with us, but we want to draft you as like, you know, that a boy. You know, whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. I just hung up, went back to sleep. Like, David. Hey, Samson. you know what? I, you know what? I'd really love to see, which I think would be cool, and I think it'd be super helpful, like helpful for uh, Major League Baseball too, is if. Obviously, high school season ends way earlier, but like high school season's done, college season's done. You take the top 300 prospects and, you know, like for college baseball, they all go off and play summer ball. Well, you take the top 300 prospects that are in the draft and they go play in a summer league. So now your draft ends up being in the middle of the major league playoffs now. So where now you've got a good idea of what some – and look, I get it. You got some guys that are high school guys, some guys that are here already. Well, but let's just say you see – the guy that's a high school kid that's polished that you thought was polished and he shows up and he's an arm and he just dominates when you're like, maybe we really don't have to waste time with him in low way. Right. Well, that, that would, I mean, I get that, but I think they want to be able to draft him earlier so they can play, start, start there. But my point you know is, I mean? is yeah, you start the clocks quote unquote. Like, so you start playing. But my, my point is, is this is in a way still kind of the same thing. Yeah. If you I, get, I get what, what you're saying. saying. I get what you're like, saying. Like, because you're still going to play. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of the same thing. And now, They're they just have, not in your system, but right. it's kind of the same thing. Right, and what they have added is a draft, com, pre-draft combine. That's what I'm, that's my point. They've so had like, You have them all in the yeah. same pretty much area. Yeah. They're all going to play. They're not on anybody's t- team per se, but they're all going to play. So you get a chance to get them playing professional and getting professional reps. Like, I think... Because, I mean, look, you yeah, you want to, but, like, let's be honest. Like, if we really went back and asked a whole bunch of big leaguers, how many of them are going to say, man, it was that first two months I spent in pro ball that really catapulted me right. to being a big leaguer? Right. It's not really, like, that. that that's not really what's... When you're going to play against better competition anyway. It's not really what puts you over the top. So you right. might as well just put them there, let them do that, you know, let those kids kind of have their time to finish their seasons yeah. with their teams, with their people, and then, you know... That way you can kind of build it up too now right. because now you can market for it and, hey, I have a summer. They played. We can market the kids that came out here. And yeah, ball. I get that. I get. I mean, I get that. And we and can build up this draft that's going to come in the no middle doubt. of the playoffs. I get that. I think that would be a good idea. And then you don't have – and then and even if you go and maybe it's like – it's like it's almost like um, when you put your name in the NBA draft. Yeah. And you go through all the workouts and all yeah. like the combine stuff and then you, yeah, you pull your name out. Now, you don't have to pull your name out of the baseball draft, but you go and do this. And you don't get drafted where you want. Okay, I'm just gonna go to college. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean I like think it. about it. Let's be honest. If you if you flip it around in the but football that's also stage. the other thing you have to think of is you can't have it go into the fall because they have to be able to go to college. That's no, that's why I, I the well, yeah. This uh, I, that's probably yeah. I yeah, agree, but you, know you can I mean? still have the summer league early enough to where it yeah. Ends. So maybe you do it in July. I mean, the, the draft has already been pushed back now to where it's yeah. Maybe you have yeah. it in July and have the the draft happens like the end of July. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe the right. summer league's a month. Right. Or. Hey, the World Series. Or it starts early. Like, you just won't get. Like mid, you just mid, won't get. Mid, dude, yeah. I mean, it'll be what maybe twenty guys at the most that won't be there that'll from the College World Series. Right. But we're talking about the top three hundred. Yeah. The rest of them will be right. there. Right. It get, it just gives you a chance. Like think about it. You think football wouldn't love to have the draft in January and get those guys in there while the season's still going? It just doesn't really make sense. Yeah, right no here. doubt. You know, I'm with you. So I get it. Um, I was gonna ask Lloyd a question, but he went to. He's the gone. Mountain. I was going to see if we have any questions or anything that people want to Yeah, there's answer. one. Um, how do you all feel about the NL East race this year, and how do you think it plays out? Hey, uh, that's a good one. Well, uh, It's pretty typical. Here's, I mean, that's <laughs> – NL East has race. been NL, – uh, NL East. Oh, yeah. NL East. I'm sorry. I, thought, yeah. I, mean, I, NL East, I mean, honestly, NL East has been pretty typical. No, right now it's the Mets and the Braves. Uh, Braves have cut it from 10 games to two and a half. Yes. A I will yeah. say this. You know who's going to – Caused a lot of people a bunch of issues towards the end of the year. I'm not saying they're gonna make the playoffs. The Phillies. They're well Phillies Phillies are obviously yeah. good, but the Marlins are gonna beat some teams later down the line and it's gonna piss some people the off Mar- because the they're Marlins gonna mess. for sure the Marlins, every fifth day. Dude, Alcantara is a has problem. a chance to start the all-star game. Hey, he's yeah. a problem. hundred and one with the sink. That guy's unbelievable. He has a chance to start the All Star game. Sandy Alcantara. He's like twenty. When we're talking young, one and two and three games, that's gonna at some point, but not now. Hey, when you're talking one and two and three games, that's gonna like decide a division, and that guy's throwing every fifth day. Yeah, yeah. Against against one of these right, like that's gonna gonna cause issues because of how good he is. Obviously, um, I feel bad for Juan Soto. (laughs) <laughs> Cause he's so good, and he's just kind of getting wasted away over there right now. Well, he keeps rejecting all their contract extensions. He should. Be. He should. <laughs> he, should be. he absolutely should. Get they're out like, of there. They're like three fifty. He's like, nah. He's like, nah. Get out of there. I'm he gonna make the be. most ever. Yeah. 
because he's so young and he's so good. But I think the I think the Mets and the Braves are good now. The problem did they just win a World Series? What happened? Dude. The Braves. Yeah, they no. did. They, they won a World Series when they made that huge comeback when they were the in Nationals. last place. Oh yeah, and they, they got rid of everybody. They traded. Yeah, they unloaded the whole uh, squad. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 especially yeah. after last year, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah Harper's not there. Well, Harper left before that. Yeah. They traded. They actually won after Harper. Turner. Yeah. They won the year after he left. Yeah. They won the year after he left. And then, but then you have. You have to think about the Mets have Scherzer just came back and he looks he looked good unbelievable and you have Jacob Degrom is about he's, to start his rehab yeah. trying to get back yeah and you, so you have the two aces that and their pitching stuff is already really good yeah. Yeah. that's gonna be an issue too for Did, your uh, for your Braves I don't know our lineup's pretty good though I mean, it is I mean obviously they make I mean those two are elite yeah. I'm about to say those two are yeah that's a but we also we just got like our one of our main bullpen guys back who's a big bigger and y'all have was a Strider. Spencer Strider. Um, Spencer Strider. He's yeah. stud. shoving. Soraka's supposed to. I think Soraka's good too. He's supposed to so be he's healthy. He's there, supposed like, to come back pretty soon after the break. He's throwing. He's about to start his rehab too. If he's like he was before he tore his Achilles twice, that's. I know why. I know why he asked this question because he wanted to talk about, 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 about the Braves. Yeah, I ignored it because I didn't. I can't name three in all East teams. Oh, we just named you the whole. We just named you. We just named you the entire. You just watch him. You just out there watching Braves baseball. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I watch him. He does the chomp in his living room every day. Oh, you shouldn't be doing that. We don't. We don't talk about. We don't talk about Major League Baseball here as much as like we probably should. But I mean, I I mean, I keep up with it. You know, we will. We're gonna we're gonna start talking about it. Like especially as the season starts. Like listen. Once the All Star break hits, which is coming up soon, then the real season starts. And the real, yeah. then we'll talk a lot more about it. Then people start. Getting I'll watch really the upset. playoffs every year. Oh, that's we're gonna start getting yeah. into that too. Okay. Just as a Braves fan, I feel much better being two and a half back compared to ten back. Duh. When June started. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> you mean? You know what I mean? You, you really have a real future in this business. Well, 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 <laughs> <laughs> feel good about not being as bad as we were. <laughs> well, nothing really changed on the roster. They kind of just called. They just up got Mike, better. They yeah, called they just... up Michael Harris, and all of a sudden we started winning games. Yeah, I mean, look, it's gonna come down. How how far back are the Phillies? You uh, know? I can look it up. Um, they can't be that much further than we are. No, I just don't. I mean, they, they're seven back. Their bullpen still just does not close games out. Yeah. Nope. Do you think this is the real Derek Kalanihi in this chat right now? Why? Wow, what do you say? He said I was in your room watching it. When you were talking about your draft. Was he with you? Was he with you? So that's him. Is that really? Yeah, Derek's he, in the chat? Derek's in the chat. <laughs> ask him Ask him what he liked to drink during uh, 2009. What was his drink of choice? The brass monkey. He doesn't remember. <laughs> yeah. Wait, five beers? No. No, that's not him. Uh, he's years, not the five beer guy. Is it really? I don't know. Helene, is that you? Show yourself. Clap twice. Show yourself. Call him. Well, I mean, uh, if it's the same number. Does he have the same number? I would imagine so. I think so. Do we, would, is this the real? I mean, I guess why would somebody have a different Derek? Because you don't know the <laughs> chat, dude. <laughs> but how would he know that? Hey, who's posing himself? Yeah, I guess he wouldn't. I guess he wouldn't he know wouldn't that. Know, Nobody yeah, in the chat would know, know that. that. Yeah. So it must be him. Unless he just took a good guess. Is this the real Derek Helene? He... How did you catch that ball at third? <laughs> <laughs> the one that he caught behind him and threw yes. 100 mile hours across the diamond? Jack and water. Okay. There it is. As, as he also liked to chug wild turkey. Well, that the water is the... You make your own gravy. <laughs> I guess... Wait, wild what? turkey... Welcome like, to the chat! Honey? Well, wild turkey, like the 110 proof wild turkey? Or... Do you like the normal one? Whatever one took him on. Whatever one is just, he's just having. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What a legend. It was a legend. Derek was great. Derek's got a, hey, Derek would smoke you in golf, too, by the way. He's hey, great, great golf. Song. Very good. Well, yeah, if he's chugging wild turkey, we're it's right on the same way. plate. It's a yeah, long way. Right there. Very good. All you got to do is hammer whiskey in the middle of the day, and you'll start to do a little swing oil. Didn't work for me this last past weekend. Did you play? What happened? Did you drink the Florida played water? Played three days in a row. Wow. What, what day was your best? Third day. Third day? Wow. I, uh... It's usually when I'm in the... Look, it was, uh... It was... It went... Look, I had some good ones. Some good shots. A lot of bad ones. Some good ones. Um, wedges were actually... My short game was actually really good. What happened? My drive no driver? Stills. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I have a big lesson on Friday, though. Yeah, before at the our place. Show. Before yeah. our show. Is he so, doing two people at once? 
Uh, I'd like to just watch. I won't even need a lesson. Maybe I don't know how long it is. After let me get the first lesson out the way. And a, then yeah, start doing it. I won't ask for any advice. I just want to hear what he says. We'll work it out. Yeah, I got a lot going on. Yeah, I gotta make it happen. Got yeah, I've got a lot going no, on. No, my golf swing. lesson before in my, my in my swing. Oh, I'm talking okay. About. In my yeah. swing. Yeah, golf lesson before my YouTube show. Don't don't discredit the show. No, I'm just saying it sounds like a great day. It's a great day. Got to work before that. A little work, half day work. This is on Friday. Mm-hmm. Back to Earl. Friday is going to be a busy uh, Friday back to football Earl's. recruiting day. Perfect. Why is that? We got more to things we to got talk two about. Two or three big targets set to announce their decisions on Friday. One of them is a five-star receiver that we're supposed From to Florida? be. Well, apparently, player. your friend, who uh, uh, you love so much on the internet, made didn't he make a oh uh, Blake? Huh? Who? No, okay. I'm just like. Did he make a reference to that? Oh, he tweeted eyeball emoji. The cat five. Uh, Blake. Just, he he tweeted that whenever they set their announcements, but they uh somebody crystal balled him to LSU like an hour ago. We what should. position? Wide, wide receiver, a five star receiver, and then Dante Moore, the five star quarterback, is gonna announce at eleven o'clock yeah, on time He's on Friday. He ain't coming. Probably not. But Who's the other guy? The five star receiver. Oh, you said three. Name. There was a um, I think it was a. You want to make a prediction? A defensive guy. That linebacker that committed to three star is going to be a high four star by the time it's all said and done. He had 210 tackles his sophomore year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know, he, how is he a three star? Because he's only, I think he's only, he's, he's, only six a so- feet. he's a sophomore. He's six feet, 205. But yeah, like, he's got time to get more hmm. stars. He'll be big. He's going to be a big Where's he from? Tell me. Louisiana. We played them in high school. They were not good. From Louisiana. Not, not we can't good. get those guys. Can't get the good ones, though, from Louisiana. You, he's still trying to go back to it. You heard what he said? No, I said we got to get them. in high school. They were not very good. Uh-huh. No, they didn't have those. They just didn't, <laughs> have, those, they didn't have those guys. If you get this five-star and you get Samson, that's two five-star receivers in the same class. Mm-hmm. To an already loaded room. They're quarterback. What do you They're mean no flip quarterback? Ricky you have a five-star no quarterback in there. We have Walker. No, that's, not in that class. We have Walker. Walker right now. Well, well, well also, I mean, if you Walker. look at if you look at like around the SEC at starters, it's like it's mostly transfer guys. So is it really a huge deal if you miss out on this class when you have Walker? One, you have Walker, and two, you have the portal. No. And three, you have Miles Brennan eligible for another year. Good that's God. he. He better don't, just don't let him do this again. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> don't, not, don't let him. Do it's eight oh three. We got you play minutes. Wait, we got, did you play with Walker? No. We got three minutes of Walker. You mean? Brandon? I mean, I've been miles. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, okay, we got three minutes left. I mean, three minutes over. Did you play with Andrew Hatch? Time? I did. How was he? He's a great human. Except yeah. that he threw a hail mary forty yards and read the end zone. That well, he was concussed. Did you? Were you nervous? Did you see that when he got hit at Auburn? Were you like, oh my god, he's dead? Yeah, I was like. Ooh. Because he went to the wrong sidelines, yeah. and he fell down. He fell down again. He was a great human, though. He was a very nice human. We probably, he probably makes a lot of money run, running about, a business or running yeah. a business. He did. He started He's his, a successful guy. I got, he started I got, I his imagine. own testing center in uh, wherever Harvard is. It gets you ACT prep or you SAT go. prep for Harvard. There you go. So he's crushing it. Yeah, he's doing it. I mean, you that think, man you loves think they got boat. a lot of those running through that, that program? Yeah. Or what? Um, okay. We got two segments left. No more what's for lunch because we don't have lunch anymore. But it that is. segment is not my fault, which you were slacking on. You did not put anything in there. No, I've been relying on. Yeah, you, yeah, you choked. Let's go to curtain calls first. Now, nah, curtain calls to be the last one. I'm trying to think. We if don't have know. a not my fault. Oh no! It is Derek Helen. It is him. <laughs> uh, mm, ah, mm, not my fault. No, okay. This happened to me over the weekend when we were on the boat. We get pulled over by the game warden while we're fishing. Busted. Like, I don't fish at all. I'd lo- I'd, I've caught one. You look like you're a fisherman. I got one whopper. Do you want to see this fish I caught? Uh, I got one you keep whopper going. one time. It was awesome. But we got pulled over by the game warden, and the guy that got in, essentially for driving the boat that got in trouble, he said he took the 200-question test. He doesn't really remember his paperwork. Got a fifty dollar fine for fishing without a license, but this man fishes every goddamn day. Is it should that should those people that the warden just know that like, bro, you're good. Like, no, you, you got you got to enforce. Got to enforce. It. I mean, it's easy to get a license. It's the easiest thing in the world to get. No, license. it's super hard. 
It's a very, it's, it's a very, I, I said the same thing. He's like, why don't you just have one? He's like, a fishing license? It's like a 200 question test. That That's not would, true. I, I've gotten a fishing they, license before and a hunting license before and I don't do anything. It, this is what I heard from the, mar, what do you call them? Game wardens? Marshals? They're marshals on the golf course. They're the, these two guys, <laughs> this command was Bobby Boucher, but he was nice. Um, but he was like, yeah, I understand. It's like a 200. It's an extensive test that you have to take to get this. Maybe. I, I thought I that 4th of July weekend, maybe like a okay slap on the wrist. Like we don't probably have why to. why he's out there because 4th of July weekend. Right. But he's looking for booze bags. Right. $50 fine. That's not bad. Which I had to grab all the beers, jump in the water, and hold them <laughs> no, under, my, under my. No, you I didn't. I just held them under myself. No, you so you're lying. And floated on them. So you're lying. Okay. He's lying. No, He's lying. Okay. Curtain calls, which Lloyd does not have one again. That's okay. Yes, I do. What? My curtain call oh. is. You're not, you're not going first. You don't have it in there. He's going first. He put it in there. What's for lunch? Brought to you by. Well, no. That's not, that's not Three, what's for lunch. Three, <laughs> two. No, it's, it's the Not My Fault, which is brought, brought to you, to you by, by Dozy Place. And the curtain call. Well, actually, we probably should have something on the curtain call, too. A sponsor on the curtain call. Curtain call. You have a curtain call that you put in there. Yep. Kendrick Perkins. For um, actually having the balls to go on national television and apologize to New Orleans for signing Zion to his max extension. Real man, real man can uh, can admit. And he's donating wrong. to a charity. I don't. I don't. I haven't found what charity that is. But how much? Some, some New Orleans charity. He didn't specify in the clip. Mm. He just okay. said he would be making a donation in his apology. So my current call is: I was, we were in Orange Beach this weekend with a bunch of friends. We went to watch Morgan Wall at the Wharf, and um, you know, unbeknownst, is it beknownst? No, mm-hmm. beknownst, but unbeknownst to us, we were all hanging out. We would go in the water and we would hang out and we would talk and we we're in the water. Well, just get an article sent to us that on July 3rd, there were a school pro of a college sharks <laughs> that were right near the shore of this area that we were at. See, and I was in the water. Not knowing anything. <laughs> what happened? This is why I don't do it. <laughs> and nobody knew it, but you know what? My current call is to me and all my friends who did not get eaten alive by sharks that were like, there's probably 15 or 20 of them in there. Your current call should be like, literally, ignorance is bliss. If you don't know that there's sharks you can't in the be water, scared. you can't be scared because you don't know what to yep. be afraid of. Yep. Had you known. Had I known, I would not have set foot in the water. I wouldn't have peed in the water. Did you? What do you mean, did I? See, I have this thing. Oh, and my I God. I don't get it. I can't pee in my pants in the water. I have to. Check your. I do. <laughs> in, the, in the ocean? No matter where I am. Well, I mean, that's. You better not get caught. You can get, it must be from. Because, you know. You, you got, got little young kids out there on an accident. Lloyd, he must get that from his. Uh, you know what? And you know from, what, you know Michael? What? From Jay Johnson? What? 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 Call back joke. Uh, but yeah, I just can't I can't physically make myself pee in my pants because it feels like I'm trying to pee in my pants, even though I have to pee. Could you do it if you were standing in the shower that wasn't running? But not with shorts on. But if I think you just need to get past that threshold. I don't I think this is a good threshold to have. <clears throat> Now when you got to pull your thing out of the yeah, water. In the well, water. you just take a knee and you drop it through the, the bottom. Well, excuse me. For, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, tripod. Um, <laughs> I know I'm just super short. <laughs> All right. What a great show we had today. Great guest. My curtain call. Oh, we have one now. Here we go. Uh, I've been having one. Remember, we, you had one too. It was Pickle Rick for years, the, the, the pickle mascot. That tackled. That oh yeah, streaker. that's what it was. That was my other one. Yeah. And mine was Joey Chestnut for being an absolute American Boss. hero. How this man was working and choking working. somebody out while eating two hot dogs in his hand, and it was just one of the most unbelievable. Like, is that his job up there to be? I guess he is the police of that stage. Found out today he is. It cost me the over. I, I don't. I can't watch that. It makes me want to throw up. Oh, do you want to be in the splash zone? No. There's reporters that have to go down nope. beneath where the, all nope. the water is being yeah. dipped. That sounds disgusting. Nope, don't want to do that. Also, I found out today that Joey Chestnut is in another eating competition at the end of July, and it's Raising Cane's. Really? Where How many it? chicken fingers he can eat? He says he's going to try to break the record. Well, what's the record? I don't know. What do you I think it would be? I almost threw up just watching that whole thing. I can't watch. 
I can't even. Talk I didn't watch about the whole. I, I only saw the first like two or three minutes, and they showed like an underview of one of them. That's the splash zone. No, no, no. Okay, yeah, but you have to understand what I saw, which made me change the channel. Is he was eating, and then he he took a drink, and he had the cup in his hand, and you know, like the lip of the cup. There was like hot dog, dog. stuff stuck in the cup, oh. and it was, I said, "Nah, I'm out, bro. I can't see no more." <laughs> How about your guys that chugged a gallon of lemonade? Why did he do 37 that? Thirty-seven seconds. That, oh, it was another competition. Did he do that before or after? Oh, he didn't do it. Joey Chestnut. No, didn't no, do that. I, I saw it was that. It was I don't that, know. It was just a whole other. It was a whole other competition. Okay, I didn't know. Thirty-seven seconds. Chugged a gallon of lemonade. <laughs> Good luck. Did y'all ever do the gallon challenge for milk? Nope. Yeah, no. I've seen someone do it. I'm not trying it myself. You'll throw up. Yeah, no, you, you can't. Will. You'll project right? throw up. Oh yeah. We yeah. talked about this. Yeah, we, we did. Um, about the Tyler Salad. Great show. How many? If you just have, put a number on it, chicken fingers. From Canes. That I can eat? No, that, that you think the record would be. If that, the record for hot dogs, I believe, is 76. Is it more or less? I would say more. I would, I would say you don't less. have to eat the bread or the, you know what I mean? Like, Do you go sauce instead of water? Just like a big no, cup of sauce. Sauce. Will make, sauce will take too much room in your stomach. Maybe, I would say 80. I would, I'm more in, do you think he dips it in water? Oh, I guess it's true. You have to chew it. The water helps it go down. A glizzy good. Let's go down. Let's go 62. I was saying 52. I was thinking 52. 62. Do you want me to look up what the current sure. record is? Sure, look it up. Because Speaking I'm thinking, of... Because the breading on the... Yeah, I think that, that was... It's not this. It's not the... Yeah, I think that's it. Because you don't have the water. It's not going to make it go down. I mean, you can't be dipping that in water. Because let's be honest. Look, that's hey, where I was going. Look at that. Hey, look at all the sharks. Honest. Nah, I'm out. Look at all the sharks. I say twenty. That was more than I thought. That's a ton, dude. Lloyd. No chance. And I got my and dick out. Oh, they're not even sure. Look up. <laughs> they're gonna show how close. Look how close. Shorts. Look how close, bro. That's y'all. That's your little group. So, it's you probably us right, right there. there. So where I would be, right? You see that one? See that one umbrella right there? The right red in the one. I'd be. I'm a big tent guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's unbelievable. Yeah, no. Nah, There's good. Jared. <laughs> yep, there. I'm good. Are you Look at these two guys. Look at these two guys. No, guys. No, 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 they're a little too no short. real close to them. They're, no try, they're trying to eat Lloyd's penis. That's okay. Oh, watch out. And they're also, these are kind of be bigger than that. I see something swimming. <laughs> you need a bigger oh boat. Oh, my gosh. Look <laughs> I don't think you have that. the facilities oh, for that. Bro. Oh, my No, God. bro. What, wait, was this a drone? What's going on? Why, yeah, why are there so many hanging out? Was this oh, a drone? Man. It's a helicopter. Oh. Oh, that's why the helicopters are flying so low. Oh, you actually saw it? I just saw two uh, every day. A helicopter. Oh, look at that. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God, dude. You're say 50, lucky. That's 100. This is almost a movie. This look is, at how many there are. Jaws again. <laughs> but they make one mega Orange shark. Orange Beach Jaws. Right <laughs> I, over, I, under, I undersold it. Look, that's and the that's rest at of the sandbar. That's the sandbar. No, that's the rest of them over there. They're just chilling. <laughs> <laughs> that's unbelievable. Thank God I didn't see that. No shot. Um, Did anybody know reported accidents? Uh, I think they said the next day, July 4th, a lifeguard got bit by a shark when they were training. Mm. It was like a training exercise. That sounds awful. They said. Sounds like it didn't go to. Yeah, to that sounds good. Good. I'm not, I'm not really cool with them job hazards. Like, hey, sign on. I'm just letting you know during training, this is happening before you might get bitten. All right, bro. I'm out. And the day before, we got all the video of a thousand sharks hey. in the water, but let's swim a little deeper. Hey, I'm good. Y'all, yeah, we good. Let's do the training in the pool. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Y'all got, yeah, where's Pamela Anderson? Yeah, I'm good. No. We, uh, who should call tonight? It's 8.15. 15 minutes of overtime today. Oh, I was going to say, what time do we end? Now, great show today. At 2 o'clock this afternoon, no guest. At 2.02, at two guests right away. Amen. Great. Uh, obviously, we had feelers out there. And we just needed some conversation with them. They just had to get to us. They got to us. Two great guests. Great insight from, you know, about. He was great. He was. About the hiring of Wes Johnson. Like, what's kind of the going on in the big leagues and college and jobs and all that kind of stuff. And then, obviously, Jay was great as usual. Gave us a lot of insight. Lloyd keeps making him laugh, which is great. The minute he stops laughing, I think we're in trouble. I know. I, I, uh, ooh, ha. I, I'm more nervous than anybody during those interviews because I only get one or two, and they got to they got to. And you wait to the end. This one and this one. That was the hardest I've seen him laugh. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. And you almost went too far with the drugs. He ignored that one. 
No, I had boy. That, he said it you first. Almost did, you almost did good by not putting Oh, yeah, he said you weren't going to pass. Yeah, the original test. And that's what I was like, oh, what kind of drugs are we testing? But was he talking about drugs or was he talking about the original first line of interviews? I would pass that. He was definitely talking about the first line of interviews. I think you're exactly. <laughs> not the first line of So they don't else. drug test? Yeah, okay. uh, they do. Oh, what yeah. do you think, Mark? Um, well, we <laughs> will be back. Coordinator? What do you think I gotta as, do to get these men on Steve campus? Ask Steve Sarkeesian if they if they trust. Yeah, us. <laughs> we <laughs> will be back. On. We will be back live back from day, Earl's baby. on Friday, four thirty to six. Our week long hiatus is over. We are back in action. Um, come see us. Come have a drink with us. Come talk with us. Come laugh at us. Come make fun of us. Come do whatever you want to do, but just come hang out. Thank you for supporting. Thanks for being in the chat. Boater safety license. That's okay, it's different. It yeah. It's not a fishing license. That makes more sense. Yeah. Um, subscribe, like, share it, tell a friend. Get your license. Every Monday and Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. Every Friday, 4.30 to 6 from Earl's. We are on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And just come hang out with the boys. Use the 6 to 8 period as like a little uh, a little buffer. We haven't put any – we didn't even <clears> – <throat> Shout out Caesar Sportsbook today or our promo code Mike up 15 I haven't put out bets. I've been, look, I was a little on vacation. Took no gambling on sports. I gambled on some other things on the beach that we lost some money to. Like but what? Um, Can Jam. Have you ever played Can Jam? It's like a Frisbee game where you throw what? the thing. Yep. And you have to slap it in. Yep. Can Jam. And then uh, a little ring toss at uh, Florabama. The ring Remind toss. Me, I got a game for I got a game. The next party we have have a nice game for us. I love that. Love games. Her. Love a good drinking game. All right. Um, have a great Wednesday. What is? See you again on Friday. Huh? We're gonna talk about the game off air. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, see we you on Friday. Ring toss also. Four thirty six. What? We did ring toss also. Yep. Everybody does ring toss. I think. Um, Hard when your eyes are just crossed. <laughs> I just couldn't get that. You know what I ended Cross-fated? up doing? I went to my same. You're not gonna let me in the show, are you? No. Not, okay. not quite yet. I went to my same, like I do with bags. Doesn't work. It did. No, it I made it twice. Work. No, you didn't. I did. Really I hooked it on work. the re- Ask anybody that was there. <clears throat> so I'm proud of you. Thank you. Yep. Next Tuesday, basketball. Oh, yeah, we got to make that happen. Yeah, see you next Tuesday. You see Ramsey tw- uh, Instagrammed you. He did. Mm-hmm. What, he hit a gross bird or something? Should I be nervous? He's a big dude. 6'5". <laughs> He's a... He's coming at you. He, you're th- you're challenging him. He's coming at you. And it sucks that I'm not good at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Have a great weekend. Have a, I mean, have a great Wednesday. See you on Friday before the weekend. Um, you're watching Mike Dope. We're brought to you by Stirring Automotive. Have a great night. F45 tomorrow morning, 5.15. If I miss that, 12 o'clock, F45. I'll be there at 6.15. I wish I could go to that one. It's a great one. Okay. You have another job. I do have another job. Actually, same job. Same job. Just, well, different job. Different now. show. I guess you personality, not just yeah, a. Big you're not a. Um, Idiot yeah. producer and a person. I uh, my Twitter handle. That's what I have up there. Idiot producer. You changed it already. Uh, oh. I actually added my. Oh, I added there. you. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. That's what I did.